da, da. How much does that impact the way you bet a game? The you know the the narrative street of desperation and teams you know like throw seeding out, throw record out, throw previous matchups out, and just look at and see, you know, down to their final X number of games. This is a virtual must win for this team today. Therefore, they've got my money. I love this question so much, Adam. I I think this question you can apply it to any sport, any league, any situation. And obviously the the major sports have a little bit more swing when it comes to how the markets respond to this type Mm -hmm. of stuff. In college basketball on a Saturday, there are so many games. I like to focus on the games that I'm not seeing talked about on Narrative Street, as you mentioned. Narrative Street is an expensive one. It's like Park Place (laughs) and Boardwalk. If you want to play on Narrative Street, you're going to have to pay the premium. Now, there are situations where I'm willing to pay a premium, but on an average college basketball Saturday where there's 200, 300 games, I think it makes more sense to look away from Narrative Street. Not necessarily fading the narrative, because that can get you into trouble as well, but I think those games, and a lot of it is our fault, and not just me, but our entire industry, We're trying, just like a reporter asking a question to a coach after the game, we're trying to get that nugget, right, that gets us the attention so we can retweet it and, yeah, we had a great day. Look at this great nugget we put out and the team won and they covered. Everyone's trying to fight for that positioning in the market, which means narrative streets even harder to live on these days because there's a lot of us, very sharp, talented people that do this for a living every single day trying to put out good information and trying to get clicks on their website, blog, show, whatever. And I just I, I think it's really hard on a college basketball Saturday to, to to swim up that stream. I would rather look at the George Mason Duquesne game or the Colgate mm-hmm. Lehigh game. Like to me, those games offer a lot more value because I know the number is fair. The sports books are throwing the number up and they're not baking in any situational tax because it's a high profile game that everyone's talking about. And I think in a, in a college basketball vacuum, that's where I prefer to operate. Obviously, in March Madness, you don't have that option to go swim in the bottom of the barrel. you got to play the games that are on the board. But now that we're in the regular season, especially the last couple of weeks of the regular season, when motivation really matters and teams are preparing for the tournament, it, it really does change my strategy with, with, with just staying away from those narrative games. I'll tell you what, man. I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm with you because I bet a lot of those narrative games. But sure. again, I, I, have, I have a larger card. But I'm with <laughs> yeah. you in terms of understanding that uh, I, I, I get the approach. And, and in a lot of ways, I agree with it. I mean, one of my bigger bets just, uh, I think it was last night, was Georgia Southern, you know, to, to cover four against Old Dominion. Two bad single win teams going head to head, but, you know, isolating an edge in the matchup where Georgia Southern won that thing going away I th- and that was a game I didn't hear a, a soul yep. talking about writing about tweeting about sometimes there are these spots though that are very advantageous if you can you know dig through the, the mud and find them obviously we'll keep going with some of this conversation we'll turn the corner to the NFL draft next hour as well very much looking forward to that stay with us it is live bet Saturday here on Beeson some people just know bundling with Allstate means big savings. Just like they know the right ingredient means big flavor. They know honey on pizza is where it's at. And olive oil on ice cream is the cherry on top. Mm. And they know when you bundle home and auto with Allstate, you can save up to 25%. Mm-mm. Bundled savings vary by state and are not available in every state. Saving up to 25% is the countrywide average of the maximum available savings off the home policy. Allstate Vehicle and Property Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. There might be no tougher sport to bet than the NBA, but the VSIN experts are here to help. Become a VSIN Pro subscriber today to get daily best bet articles from myself, Jonathan Von Tobel, and Zachary Cohen. You'll also get NBA analytics reports and power ratings from Steve Mackinnon, as well as access to betting splits, matchup analysis, and injury reports on every NBA game. See everything VSIN has to offer on the NBA at vsin.com slash NBA. That's vsin.com slash NBA. 
If you're looking for an honest take on the NFL from someone who actually worked in front offices, look no further than the GM Shuffle podcast. There's 18 receivers that make over $18 million per year. Do I think all of them are worth it? Absolutely not. Each week, former NFL executive Michael Lombardi and myself, Femi Abebefe, give you two episodes covering every angle of the NFL. He's not a top five or top ten quarterback in the league. You paid him like one. Download the GM Shuffle podcast from VEASAN and DraftKings wherever you get your podcasts. The NHL regular season is in full swing, and this year's Stanley Cup feels very much so up for grabs. Hi, I'm Tony Bonantoni with VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. For some perspective on the parity in the league right now, there are seven teams on the odds board priced between plus 750 and 10 to 1 odds. The Florida Panthers are a slight favorite to win their first Stanley Cup, looking to make it back to the final after last year's disappointing loss in five to the Vegas Golden Knights. Their odds have shortened significantly thanks to a stretch of 20 wins and 26 games since late December. Good to note, however, the Stanley Stanley Cup runner-up has only gone on to win it all the following season once since 1990. Edmonton's 8-1 to despite slipping a bit since their historic 16-game win streak. At plus 850 is 2022 Cup winner Colorado and Boston, who's tied for the top spot in the Eastern Conference, but might be hard to trust after last year's epic first-round exit. If the playoffs started today, it would be the Rangers at 10-1 to as the top seed in the Eastern Conference, thanks to five more regulation wins than the Bruins. For more, head to VEASAN.com. At VEASAN, we've got you covered before, during, and after every game. Jumpstart your game day with Tim Murray and Jonathan Von Tobel on VEASAN Primetime at 6 Eastern. They'll get you ready before the first tip, puck drop, and pitch, ensuring you're ahead of the game. Then stay in the loop during all the action with the Greg Peterson Experience at 9. And as the night wraps up, join Matt Humans and Wes Reynolds on VEASAN tonight at 11, giving you the first look at tomorrow's lines to get an edge on the next day's bets. All this and more, only on VEASAN, the sports betting network. If you didn't catch sharp money, here's what you missed. Jokic, MVP market over at DraftKings. He's minus 160. It's a two-man race. Okay, I know the big guy and others want to get Luka involved in the race as well. But right now, Jokic minus 160. SGA, OKC, plus 250. Now, maybe I could see Shea Gilgis Alexander winning an MVP. Please stand by for this special presentation of the iMedia One Network on the Live 365 Network and the Live 365 app. Shot in front, Youngstown scores. Whitelaw with the hat trick, ride into the danger zone. Each path is different, every background diverse, but all arrive with the same goal. Every champion was once a contender, every professional was once an amateur. They were born to be. Zilla bounces the play. Knights. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, from the Cavelli Center in downtown Youngstown, Ohio. The United States Hockey League is proud to present regular season game number 48 for your Youngstown Phantoms tonight. They take on the Dubuque Fighting Saints. Good evening, sports fans. My name is Matt Lipsack, the voice of the Youngstown Phantoms. Please be bringing you the action this evening on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. Phantoms and Fighting Saints were in action last night here at the Cavelli Center, a game in which the Fighting Saints came from behind to grab a 6 to four victory. Phantoms opened the scoring at 7.25 of the first, an unassisted shorthanded goal from Mikey Birchall for Mikey, his 12th goal of the season, and Youngstown led one to nothing. At 9.03, Grant Young doubled that lead for Youngstown with his 12th of the season. Sam Ronaldo and Adam Patilla with the assists. And Youngstown led two to nothing. Dubuque got on the board at 14-13 with the 24th goal of the season for Jake Sondriel. And we were all in uh, Youngstown had a 2-1 lead at the end of the first period. Phantoms grabbed a 3-1 lead at 152 of the second. Luke Osborne, his fifth of the year. Sam Ronaldo and Adam Patilla with the assist. But then Dubuque gets three straight goals to grab a 4-3 lead. Power play goal for Noah Powell at 6-11, his 26th of the season. Power play goal for Gavin Cornforth, his 13th of the season at 18-10. And then an even strength goal for Nick Romeo at 7.51 of the third. Phantoms tied it at 12.36 off the stick of Charlie Serrato. Tried to feed Connor DeHaro in front, but it hit off a Dubuque skate and went into the net for Serrato, his ninth of the season. Daniel Genchko and Luke Osborne with the assist. But 20 seconds later, Dubuque retakes the lead on a goal by Luke Malbuff, his third of the season. And then at 18.49, Dubuque puts it on ice with the empty netter off the stick of Michael Barron. Kevin Raidler got the win. He stopped 20 out of 24. Aiden Wright took the loss, his second of the season. Made a career high in saves, 35 on the 40 shots that he saw. But unfortunately, in a losing effort, Dubuque power play was 2 for 5. Youngstown power play was 0 for 2. Let's take a listen to last night's post-game interview with Phantoms head coach Ryan Ward. Ryan, your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I thought uh, obviously, um, I you know I don't know I wasn't I thought it was terrible to be honest, but I thought we uh, we sat back. We were I mean at the end of the day, I I did pretty good coaching. That's all. Nothing else to say. Like I I was a stupid. I made some stupid decisions and um, cost our team the game, and that's on me. And uh, I got to be better. So that's on me. Uh, second period, you get outshot 16 to four. Where do you think things went off the rails there in the second? Um, I thought we took uh, five penalties. Um, I thought it was like the Golden Globes out there tonight for a little bit. Um, a lot of acting going on. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, we got to be smarter. We got to be more disciplined, and that falls on me as a coach. And I have to do uh, a much better job if we have a chance. If we're gonna have a chance to do anything this year. Do you have anything to come? Thanks, Ryan. Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. As a premier real estate team in the Mahoney Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach combines the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you, who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, powered by people. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Gavelli Center during the pregame show. It is time for tonight's scratch report and to help bring you part of the scratch report, we're gonna welcome Brendan Miller onto the airwaves. Brendan normally helps handle the social media for us, but tonight Brendan's jumping on the mic. Brendan, welcome to the broadcast. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Thank you for having me tonight. And so to start off with the scratch report, starting with the Fighting Saints, uh, number three, Jaden Jubinville, and number 18, Yuri 
Parchekic. And for the Phantoms, number two, Tomas Machu. Number nine, Miles Gunty. Number 22, Nathan Lewis. Number 25, Braden Clark. Number 34, Sasha Bodemin. Number 39, Brecken Smith. And number 71, Daniel Yenchko. Thank you very much, Brendan. All right, let's roll into the starting lines. We will begin with the visiting Dubuque Fighting Saints winner tonight's game with a 31-10, 3-3 record. Their 68 points put them in first place in the USHL's Eastern Conference. Starting on the left wing out of Minnetonka, Minnesota, committed to the University of Minnesota and the draft property of the Boston Bruins. Number 11, Beckett Hendrickson, centering the starting lineups for the Saints out of Woodbury, Minnesota, committed to Boston College. Number 16, Jake Sondriel. On the right wing out of Glenview, Illinois, committed to Denver, number 27, James Reeder. On defense out of Carbondale, Colorado, committed to Colorado College, number 25, Fisher Scott. And out of Espoo, Finland, committed to Western Michigan, number 20, Una Weisenen. In net out of Gavel, Sweden, committed to Nebraska Omaha and the draft property of the Ottawa Senators, number 35, Kevin Radler. Radler enters tonight's game with a 21-5, 2-2 record. A 3.12 goals against average and a .896 save percentage. Fighting coach Saints are coached by Kirk McDonald. The associate head coach is Evan Dixon. They are assisted by Alex Crom. And now for the Youngstown Phantoms who enter tonight's game with a 26-14, 4-3 record. Their 59 points put them in third place in the USHL's Eastern Conference. Starting on the left wing of Fort Wayne, Indiana, committed to Lake Superior State, number 28, Hunter Ramos. Centering the starting lineup for the Phantoms out of Falston, Maryland, committed to Penn State. Number 14, Charlie Serrato. On the right wing, out of Mundelein, Illinois, committed to Michigan. Number 19, Mikey Burchill. On defense, out of Plymouth, Michigan, committed to Wisconsin. Number 13, Luke Osborn. And out of Raleigh, North Carolina, committed to New Hampshire. Number 5, Connor DeHaro. In net, out of Wake Forest, North Carolina. Number 30, Aiden Wright. Aiden enters tonight's game with a 7-2-0-1 oh, record, a 2.37 goals against average, and a .907 save percentage. The Phantoms are coached in his second season by Ryan Ward. The associate head coach is Andy Contois. They are assisted by Brandon Gotkin and Brandon Dennis. The equipment manager is Stephen Smith. Athletic trainer Amber Martinelli. Goaltending coach Neil Conway. Strength and conditioning coach Tommy Malloy. Director of Skill Development is Carl Linden, and the general managers are Jason Deskins and Ryan Kozecki. The officials for tonight's game are selected by the United States Hockey League and are as follows. The referee is Chaz Naki. The linesman will be Joshua Rosenbaum and Jordan Stachelski. I'm going to step aside for some marketing, and then we'll be right back here on West. Two men in a truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110, and go Phantoms! Passion. Talent development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand scores! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. Score! 
and Tory Krug were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. The Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Youngstown Phantoms. Located in downtown's historical standby building and fully updated with today's amenities while preserving its historical charm and neoclassical architecture of 1907. Offering modern conveniences such as on-site room service, free Wi-Fi, complimentary business center, and a 24-hour fitness center. Events are also memorable with over 5,000 square feet of meeting space, including our top floor ballroom accented by 13-foot ceilings, Palladian windows, and views from 12 stories up. Conveniently located within walking distance to the Cavelli Center, the Youngstown Foundation Amphitheater, Youngstown State University, OWOW Science Center, and Dior Performing Arts Center, the Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is a proud partner of the Youngstown Phantoms and invites you to be our valued guest. Get a meet dream. Get a me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get a me Drain at 330 758 5031 and get it fixed fast. Call now 330 758 5031. Veterans, the Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including Veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. This prize is what you could win on the new $5 Wheel of Fortune scratch-off from the Ohio Lottery. There's only one letter missing at the end of B-I-G-M-O-N-E. <clears throat> Why, yes, uh, the answer is big money. $100,000 big money. And if you don't win, you can enter for a chance to attend a Wheel of Fortune live taping where you could win more big prizes. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Play responsibly. Wheel of Fortune is a trademark of Califon Productions.
A beautiful rendition of the National Anthem by Chase Powell, joined in by the Cavelli Center crowd when we had some <laughs> mic issues. Brendan, I got chills. Yeah, I mean, that that's one of those things you see at like the Penguins game, but, you know, one of those things where I hear, not many people here tonight, but it's it's it's, gra it's, it's one of those things that's good to have uh, fans that come and come along and able to join in here. Welcome back into the broadcast booth, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Lipsack and Brendan Miller here with you. Getting ready for puck drop between the Youngstown Phantoms and the Dubuque Fighting Saints for the fourth and final time this season. Dubuque has taken two out of the first three and have clinched the season series because Youngstown, even with a regulation win tonight, cannot match Dubuque for points in the series because Youngstown's win was a shootout win. So Dubuque has clinched the season series for purposes of playoff tie-breaking. Right now the Phantoms... Trail Dubuque by nine in the Eastern Conference stands, but Youngstown only two points out of second place. And of course, those top two seeds get the bye through the first round of the Clark Cup playoffs. But Green Bay, who is ahead of the Phantoms, also has two games in hand. So Youngstown, as the saying goes, needs to make hay while the sun is shining. Sandriel and Serrato at center ice roll for initiative. We are underway as Dubuque controls the opening draw. Scott ahead off of Hendrickson, bouncing around at the red line, picked up by Ramos, brought into the Saints zone. Down the right side, Scott wedges him off the puck, rolls to Vizen in behind the net, feeds it up the middle, off the skate of Hendrickson, bouncing around, finally down for the Saints. They will send in Sandriel, 98 USHL points in his career, wedged off the puck by Osborne. Comes over to Reeder, up to the point, Scott, shot, rebound, score! Oh. Beckett Hendrickson chips home the rebound for his first goal as a Saint. 
his 19th goal of the season and 34 seconds into this one, Dubuque has a one to nothing lead. Brennan, what'd you see? Yeah, just one of those plays where uh, Finding Saints came down game, came down the right side and, and right with a lot of body, uh, bodies in front, just you know, able to chip it right past right and just one of those tough ones to get right off the bat. That's not one you want to see. Young and Paulson to take the draw. Paulson wins it cleanly. Back to Seamus Powell, D to D over to Malbuff. And down into the Young Sound end. Strathman plays in the right wing corner. Floats it over to Pittner. Pittner taken to the wall by Barron. Paulson in trying to dig that one free. Finally comes free for the Saints. Barron will pick it up in the left wing corner. Up to the point for Seamus Powell. Had it hop over his stick and down into his own zone. Patsilla just got around and played it to Botterill. Botterill gloves it down the right wing circle. Played it into the corner for Patsilla. Taken to the wall by Powell. Puck picked up by Young. Up to the point for Pittner. Walks the blue line. Feeds it to Strathman. Strat looked for an angle. Comes over to the wall, being watched by Noah Powell. Tried to play it down low. Powell knocks that down and carries the center. Over to Paulson. Tried to get it back to Powell. Knocked away by Pittner. Bouncing puck. Strathman knocked it down. Played it over to Patilla. Skate to stick. And snapped it ahead off of the skates of Strathman. Didn't know it was in his feet as he kicked it, actually, to the debut boot line. Saints bring it back ahead and into the Youngstown zone. Paulson, long distance shot. Played it to the right wing corner. Puck rebound loose in the slot as one ended up ricocheting through the blue paint dangerously. Femmes able to clear it out the center. Puck settles down for Hanrahan. Gain the official's crease as a penalty is upcoming on Youngstown. Or did the whistle blow and the penalty's on Dubuque? It's tough to see there. I'm not sure. I wasn't, I, honestly, I never even heard a whistle until just now, and yeah. it is heading into the box is Lucas St. Louis. The scratch last night. Yeah, Matt, and that's one thing for, for tonight's game. You're going to want to get, you know, shots on goal here from the start. Get something, you know, get get uh, get Reader ready for these shots coming in, and, and uh, you know, especially shots on the point. You know, have bodies in front. Uh, you know, the Phantoms are, are a very physical team in front. So you want to get bodies in front just to get blocks, you know, blocks, uh, shots, you know, covered by covered by players. Phantoms 0 for 2 on the power play last night for the season. 19.5% is 10th in the league. Here they win the faceoff. Strathman to Botterill. Side of the cage was looking for Patilla. Was redirected, went over to Grant Young. To Patilla. Now back to Botterill in the left corner. Up to the point for Strathman. Strat to Young. Back to Strathman at the point. Over to Botterill. Turns, fires, it was blocked. Hit off the helmet of Lucas, no, Lucas St. Louis in the box. No idea who that hit. <laughs> As it comes back to Strathman at the point. Side of the net, Young picks it up now, right half wall. Taken away by Weisen, backhanded up the far wall and out to center. 35 seconds gone on this power play for Youngstown. Penalty kill for Dubuque, very good. 83.5% is second in the USHL and tops in the Eastern Conference. Comes around to the left side. Botterill in the corner. Patilla into support as the puck rolls behind the cage. Saints will clear it ahead as it's taken by Sandriol and sent down the length of the ice. Second power play unit out as Luke Osborne will carry ahead. Drops it back for Mikey Burchill who had a goal last night. Into the zone for Zach Marin. Fired around the kick plate. Comes to Rusinski to the point for Osborne. Luke. Walks along the blue line, feeds it over to Pittner. Right half wall for Burchill. Into the box for Rusinski, over to Osborne. Now Burchill, side of the net for Marin. Tried to feed it in front, was maybe looking for Rusinski. Pass was out of his reach and evaded everybody. Went all the way back down into the Youngstown zone. Osborne, around his cage to the far side, going to start to carry ahead. Dropped it back for Burchill. 15 seconds left in the power play. Into the zone for Marin. His pass across, broken up by Giuliani and fed down the ice. And with 10 seconds left on the power play for Youngstown, that will probably just about do it. As Osborne came into the zone, walked right down the middle. His shot was blocked and be carried ahead by Sandriol. Sandriol fed it across and hit a stick and went over to the wall as he had Lucas St. Louis crashing after coming out of the penalty box. Out at center, it's Desiderio right down the middle. Floated it in toward the cage, and it's loose at the side, and Wright's going to get the cover as 
Hendrickson bidding for his second of the game. Yeah, Matt, that's one thing that we've seen last night from Dubuque as we got some post whistle going on. But Dubuque, you know, very good at, at crashing the net. So for right and defend, defenders for Youngstown are going to have to be strong tonight for any crash in the net and anything in front, as we've seen earlier already with Dubuque getting that one goal right in front. 15.44 left in the first. First period presented by our friends at Price Heating and Cooling. Faceoff will be to the glove side of Aiden Wright. Serato to take the draw against Sondrial. Serato wins that draw. Wilson plays it ahead and out to center. Bouncing around, comes back to Serato. Little trouble with it, able to bring it into the zone onside. Raylor slows it down behind the cage. Had a little bobble as he sends it into the left wing corner. Off of Caleb Dick, taken away by Veronin. In the right wing corner, being watched by Sondrial. Got it to Serato. To Hanrahan up to the point, kept in at the line by Wilson. Fed down low, looking for Serato. Charlie carries it back up high. Somehow kept it in the zone there. Fed it over to Hanrahan. Right circle. Shot blocked along the way. Never got in to Raylor. Now it's loose in the blue paint. Phantoms are digging at it. And Raylor has the cover. Bodies coming together again with 15.07 left in the first. Some tense moments in the blue paint for the Fighting Saints. Of course, that is the crease at that end of the ice where... Probably should have been a frozen puck last night. Ended up being a goal for Noah Powell of the Fighting Saints. It was their first power play goal of the night. And helped propel them to three straight goals that ended up getting them the lead at 4-3. to three. Face off to the left of Kevin Radler. Controlled by the Saints. Behind the cage, Vizen had it just out of his reach. Osborne pinching in to keep it alive. Got it to Patilla. Couldn't play it down low. It was broken up by the Saints, and they'll get it out to center. Ahead comes the This one rolls just wide of the cage as Wright sends it up the left wall. Kept in at the line by Fisher Scott, but then knocked off of his twig and out to center by Patilla. Picked up by Aaron and sent back into the zone. Rolls behind the cage. DeHaro's the first one there. Battling up against Cornforth, who had a power play goal last night. Comes free to the right wing corner. Osborne up the wall to Bottero. Patilla skate to stick. Couldn't get it back to Bottero as the Saints just threw it to open ice. It bounced to Connor DeHaro. Drop back for Tori Pittner. And now back to DeHaro in their own zone. Connor skates it to the red line, snaps it into the Dubuque zone, goes off for a change. Radler bounces it over to Scott on the far side. Up to center for Cornforth. He'll enter the zone down the left wing wall. Knocked off the puck by Rusinski. Comes to Pittner. Up the wall to Ronaldo. His clearing attempt hit a Dubuque stick, and he'll turn and bounce it off the Youngstown bench. And that'll get us the puck out of play in immediate timeout. 13.59 left in the first. Dubuque leads 1-0. You're listening to Youngstown Phantom Soccer and West Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call two men in a truck, Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110, and go Phantoms! We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Gravelli Center. 13.59 left in the first. Dubuque leads one to nothing. Hope you're enjoying the first responder <laughs> shenanigans going on down there. Ohio State Highway Patrol against Youngstown Police Department. Doing the bat spin and then trying to throw ping pong balls to knock over the pyramid of cups. That was, that was entertaining. It Brent. was. It really was. <laughs> Defensive zone draw of coming for Youngstown to the glove side of Aiden Wright. Serato to take the draw against Merrill. Serato wins that draw, but Dubuque gets control. It's Romeo. Couldn't feed it up to the point. Stolen by the Phantoms. Veronin chips it ahead for Burchill. Seamus Powell swept it away from Veronin. 
Picked up along the wall by the Saints, and they'll carry ahead. That's Giuliani to the line. Got it over to Maryland. Played ahead for Romeo, who oh. took a big hit from Andrew Strathman. Nice to see the cap throw in the shoulder there. This one's redirected on the net. Raylor puts the blocker down and then throws the trapper on top of it as Powell comes in to start yeah. shoving Charlie Serrato. And Charlie Serrato's a, a junkyard dog, he, Brendan. He <laughs> sticks his nose right in it and does not care. I, I mean, for, for being for being five or excuse me, six foot, I mean just six foot, you know, one of those kids that just likes to get right in the crease and, and fire fire some people up. And especially after a big hit like that from Strathman, you're going to see something start up like that. And Serato is one of those guys that you can count on to, to really be the, the guy to kind of not, not calm things down, but stir things up, if you want to say. Faceoff will be to the right of Raidler, who stopped four out of four so far. We're 6.30 into the first period. Dubuque leads one to nothing. They scored on their second shot of the game just 34 seconds into this one. I think we are missing a Dubuque shot up on the board. Should be four to three, not four to two. As Serato wins the draw again, Verona tried to feed it up to the point, but it split the defenseman and went down into the Youngstown end. Strathman to Pittner from the official's crease. Into the Dubuque zone, comes around to the near side. Serato throws the hit, but Giuliani got the puck and sent it back out the center. Verona sauces it over to Pittner. Torrey will carry it into the zone this time. Down the right wall, shot, missed the cage well wide. Ronaldo couldn't keep the zone alive as Paulson will play it out the center. Paulson over to Giuliani, back to Paulson in the corner. Up to the point, D to D, over to St. Louis. Back to the point for Barron, fed down low for St. Louis. Defenseman in on the rush, Ronaldo takes him to the wall. Strathman comes in to cover. Paulson played the puck off the back of the net and rolled to Pittner, who sends it off the far glass, kept it line by Powell. Sent across for a one-timer that is knocked away by right rebound. Out to center point. Dick sends it over to the circle for a one-timer by Barron. That goes into the meshing, out of play. 12-29 left in the first. And Sam Ronaldo just getting on the ice, just try to block that one-timer from, from the right wing circle. Uh, that takes a lot of guts, really, just to lay down, lay down towards, towards the puck like that. And, you know, Sam Ronaldo, one of, those, one of those players that just love to get down on the ice, block shots. And a lot of Phantoms, too. I mean, a lot of Phantom players, they're, 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 they're really destined to... to Block shots, not getting got not getting anything to, through to right. Love to see the hustle from this team in purple as Ronaldo will take the draw against Paulson. Tied up in the circle. Osborne pried it free, got it to DeHaro, to Marin, and out to center. Picked up at the red line by Desiderio. Sent into the Youngstown zone. Osborne plays it up the far wall. Rusinski trying to get the clear, but the line is kept by Noah Powell. Tried to send it across the ice, but picked off by DeHaro. Connor ahead off of a skate. Redirected off of Rusinski and then back to the Saints defense here. Rusinski, nice back check. Got away from Paulson for a moment. Pinballing puck comes to Osborne. Luke plays over the right circle for Ronaldo. Back here toward the cage and hit Osborne and went to the right wing corner. Ronaldo double team sends it left side for Marin. Back to Ronaldo behind the cage. Watched by Dick trying to work his way up the near wall. Noah Powell will get the puck free and send it down the ice. This might go for icing on the Fighting Saints. Yes, it will. And one of the things here, Matt, that, that Youngstown's going to really have to look out for, if I've, I've already noticed it, and noticed it last night, is Dubuque likes to have those stretch passes from their own zone out to the neutral zone or by the blue line here by the Youngstown side. So they're, for Youngstown, the, de the defenders are really going to have to stay back or be careful with pinching because Dubuque really likes those, those stretch passes to get down the ice pretty quickly. Saw, a lot, saw a referee Chaz Naki giving a talking to <laughs> to Kirk McDonald. See, and I thought Noah Powell should still be out there after the icing whistle, but what do I know? Face-off warning <laughs> on Dubuque. And Dubuque will win the draw sent off the window to, nope, not to the line. It goes over the glass out of play. And because it did go off the glass, Dubuque will be allowed a line change. 11.35 left in the first period. First period presented by Price Heating and Cooling. It'll be Grant Young to take the draw against Sandrial to the left of Raidler. Young won the draw over the wall, but nobody there for Youngstown. Scott plays it behind the cage. Botterill. 
will beat out Visenin to the slot for Hanrahan. Backhander toward the cage, went up high, hit a body, came down, and rolls into the right wing corner. Hanrahan, the defenseman, still down there. Got knocked down from behind by Sandriel, got back to his feet. Couldn't get it over to Young, knocked away by Sandriel, comes around to the near side. Hendrickson will pick it up and carry to center. Hendrickson touched behind him to Sandro into the zone down the right side. Drop back to the point for Reeder. Turned and fired. Blocked by Bottero. And off of his skates, it's going to go all the way down the ice. Scott's going to be the first one back to it for Dubuque. Bottero couldn't cut Scott off at the pass, and the Saints will bring it back to center. Sandro over to Hendrickson. His pass knocked away by Strathman, but it's going to bounce to Reeder. Across over to Seamus Powell. Down the left wall. Watched by Patilla. Floated around to the right corner. Vison and pinching in on the play. Backhands it up to Reeder, but his cross ice pass looking for Powell. Went out to center. Penalty upcoming on the play. As I think Tory Pittner maybe got caught here. Interference the call on Tory Pittner. Youngstown heading to the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. On the season, the penalty kill for Youngstown 81.7%. That is third in the league. Power play for Dubuque first in the USHL at 33.7%. On the season, the Dubuque power play against Youngstown, three for 15 last night. They were two for five. Yeah, this is this is the area where this is gonna win or lose you the game here, especially against Dubuque. They, they had a powerful power play and, and you gotta take advantage anytime you get the, the, puck out of the puck out of the zone here. 27% of Dubuque's goals come on the man advantage and here Youngstown gets control of the faceoff and Rusinski backhands it down the ice. Seamus Powell leaves it on the near half wall for Paulson. Out to center for Noah Powell. We're going to take the Sedin approach to this and just use their first names. They're not related, <laughs> but they've got the same last name. So we're just going to take the uh, the Sedin approach here. Cornforth up to the point for Seamus. Top of the right circle for Paulson. Down low for Hendrickson. Back to Paulson. Hendrickson in the right corner. Back to Paulson. Right half wall. He'll carry into the corner. Hendrickson floats to the side of the cage. Set. Paulson tried to float it in front, hit a Youngstown skate and redirected to the left wing cor corner. DeHaro took his man out. That was Cornforth. Noah gets it out of the scrum. Plays it out toward the right point, but Paulson had vacated into the slot. And the puck goes down to the debut blue line. Paulson with a quick up, got it to Sheamus. Played out to center by Serato as he sent it across. Raidler is going to let Sheamus come back for it. Sends it up the far wall for, I believe that's Reeder. Played it back to Sheamus and then took it back behind the cage as I think Sheamus is going to go to the bench here. Into the zone comes the Fighting Saints. That's Lucas St. Louis. Tried to feed it down low. Looking for Reeder. Broken up by Strathman. Played behind the cage for Wilson but just missed it as Sandrell picks it up on the left half wall. Wilson took it away from him. Turned and fired and got it down the ice as Charlie Aaron took something up high. Looking to Chaz Naki for a call. Nothing forthcoming. 25 seconds left in the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. Puck at center, Patilla battling for it. In comes Bottero. They pried it free, at least back into the Dubuque zone as St. Louis, or sorry, Visenin has it behind the cage. Ahead to Sandriel, now Reeder. Back to Sandriel, pass was out of his reach, and Patilla just able to bounce it out to center, went right over the stick of Visenin, and now out of the box comes Tory Pittner. The tree has been preserved as Dubuque plays it back into the Youngstown zone. Wilson up the far wall, line was kept by Reeder. Spins in the corner away from Pender. Fans have three defensemen out here right now. Played over to Dick. Shot. Kick saved by Aiden Wright. Rebound to the far wall. Patilla will skate it ahead. Plays it over to Bottero, but knocked away from him by Dick. Loose in the official's crease. Reed responded back into the Youngstown zone for Wilson. Wilson over to Strathman. He'll float near side. Gain the red line and get it into the Dubuque end or? Not sure what. Maybe off of somebody on the Dubuque bench. We'll find out on the other side of this media timeout. 7.59 left in the first. Dubuque leads one to nothing. You're listening to Young Sound Phantom talking on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack.
Back inside the Gavelli Center, 7.59 left in the first. Dubuque leads 1-0. Scored 34 seconds into the game. The first goal as a Saint for Beckett Hendrickson. It was acquired on Monday night at the USHL trade deadline from the Sioux Falls Stampede. So this is Hendrickson's second trip this season into Youngstown. Had a goal and an assist in this building as a member of the Stampede as Sioux Falls was here back at the end of October. Here Dubuque won the neutral zone draw, fed up the wall by Merrill, but nobody at the right point and hustling back into his own zone is Desiderio, plays it to the far side for Dick. And then to the line, as into the zone come the Saints. King pushed down his man and that was DeHaro going down and Dubuque has taken a penalty. Heading into the box will be Andrew King, the hometown boy out of Dubuque, Iowa. Yeah, Matt, and the one thing I'm noticing so far that, that Youngstown's doing so well is, is getting in those lanes of, of when Dubu Dubuque is trying to dump it in, get it behind the net, or even just a, a simple pass to the point. They're getting in the lanes, stopping them from happening. It's, it's a good positive note coming from last night. A lot of, lot of miss and match uh, from Youngstown, so it's a good thing to see tonight that they're getting in the lanes. Very nice, Brendan. Thank you. Face off down in the... Dubuque zone as Youngstown 0 for 1 on the power play in here. Serato won this cleanly. Bottero back in the corner for Serato. Back to Bottero. And then back to Serato. Back to Bottero. <laughs> Serato behind the goal. Tried to feed it out in front for Patilla. He put his arms up and somehow Raidler <laughs> kept that out. Played the line kept by Strathman. Phantoms tried to sneak it in the short side. Young to Strathman. Walks the blue line to Young. Right circle, fed it through the box off of Serato, who gathered it in and carry behind the cage. Floats it up that near wall. Battling to try to keep it in is Serato. Oh. Patilla just couldn't hold the zone. Diving effort there by Strathman to keep it from going down the length of the ice. Serato back to Patilla at the red line. 45 seconds gone on the power play for Youngstown. Patilla over to Young, right side. Back to the point for Strathman. Across, Botterill, top of the left circle. Strathman, one timer, ripped it wide of the cage. And from behind the net, Dubuque will play it out to center. Strathman to the red line, going to spin, retreat toward his own zone, and feed it over to Rusinski. His fans trying to get a line change here. Rusinski winds it up, carries into the zone, down the right side with some speed, being watched by Scott. Spins to the side of the net, fed it up to the point for Torrey Pittner. To Osborne, they trade places. Right side, Birchall shot, mostly fanned on it, went off the heel of his stick behind the cage, Vizen and battling for it for Dubuque, stolen there by Rusinski, being hooked down a little bit by Scott, Vizen and plays it up the wall, Giuliani can't clear. Picked up by Rusinski in the right corner. Bouncing into the circle, Saints will carry ahead. Paulson brought it to the red line, sent it into the left wing corner of the Youngstown zone, 13 seconds left on the power play for the Phantoms. Marin came in trying to get it away from Paulson, who knocked it away from behind Marin, regathered, but two seconds and one out of the box. Comes Andrew King, and Dubuque is two for two on the penalty kill here tonight. Phantoms had some zone time, had some things going yeah. toward the net, just couldn't get anything behind Raidler just yet as this one ricochets in on right, and he will play it to the left wing corner. Aaron behind the cage looking for King, knocked away by Ronaldo, but it rolls to Frank. To the point, St. Louis shot, hit a stick and redirected over the net. Comes around to the far side, Veronin couldn't clear. Back into the left corner, Ronaldo around the cage, was lined up by King and took the puck from him. Fed it back in front off the skates of Aaron. It rolled to Ronaldo, to Marin on the near wall. Zach behind the net, got it to Pittner far side. Torrey snapped it ahead to center, found Veronin. Cross ice feed was looking for Ronaldo, but St. Louis got a stick on it. Picked up in front of the benches by Frank. Dropped back for Aaron. Ducked around his own man and came into the zone. Veronin got away with a hook or a hold there as Marin plays it off the window and out to center. Bounce to St. Louis. Played over to Seamus Powell. Into the zone comes Frank. Tried to drop it behind him. Ended up going on net. Wright made the save and rebound cleared out of danger by Pittner. What a move there. Went between his legs there. As offside are the Dubuque Fighting Saints with 424 left. In this first period, Seamus Powell couldn't hold the zone on the cross-ice feed by Luke Malbuff, who had the game-winning goal last night. It was a scramble in front of the net. Can remember Andrew Strathman diving 
and then playing the puck away from the blue paint with his glove, which seemed like the right play at the time, except he played it into the circle and right to the stick of Malbuff, who one-timed it to the top corner. Gave Dubuque the 5-4 lead just 20 seconds after Youngstown had tied it up. Here the Phantoms have it in the neutral zone, and Wilson rips it into the Dubuque end. Raidler couldn't get out of the blue paint in time to slow it down as the Phantoms send it back down low, and it's going to be Dick in the near corner. Tried to send it up the wall, kept in the zone by Wilson. His shot redirected on the net by Young. Stopped by Raidler. Up to the left point, Wilson this time couldn't keep it in the zone. And finally it'll settle down for Cornforth. Played over to Romeo. Knocked away by Pittner who gets hauled down. Or check that, that was Hanrahan. I think we're going to call a hand pass on the Phantoms right there at center. 3.45 left in the first. Dubuque leads 1-0. Shots on goal are 7-6 to six in favor of Youngstown, which if anything is a more positive indicator than last night as Youngstown was outshot drastically in the first two periods. In fact, Dubuque had a 16-4 to four edge, I believe, in the second period. The final shots on goal, I think, was 40-24. to 24. 41, I believe, 41-24. to 24. Yes, the, uh, that's how many saves that Aiden Wright had to make. The empty net goal was the 41st shot. You are correct, Brendan. It's Youngstown cannot enter the zone here. They're offside. Ramos touches up, but playing it out to center was Malbuff. Found Paulson across the ice. Bounces to Barron. He's knocked down by Serrato. Came to Hanrahan. He's got it back out to center. Burchill double teamed along the wall. Barron came back with the puck. Dropped it back to his own zone for St. Louis. Out to center. Taken by Burchill. Couldn't get it over to Ramos as the fans were offside. And Dubuque will carry ahead. Vizen and the defenseman up on the rush. Behind the net, took it away from Hanrahan. Noah Powell couldn't play the pulse, and now he got the steal, fed it to the back door for Weizen, but it was out of his reach, as he would have been wide open. Burchill plays it out to center, banks it past Barron. Mikey into the zone, looking for help. Taken down by Paulson. Marin keeps the line for a moment. And now Noah Powell took it away and chips it ahead. Barron coming in on right, went to the forehand, and then... Wright made the stop, and then Barron tried to bank it him off him. And Wright will glove and hang on. 2.41 left in the first period. Dubuque still with the 1-0 lead. Yeah, Matt, and right there, that stretch pass that I was talking about earlier, they, 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 Dubuque noticed that Youngstown had a bunch of players over on the left side, and they took a risk on it, and luckily it worked out for them. But great job by Wright to be there and that follow-up chance staying on the post there. Face-off will be the glove side of Aiden Wright. Ronaldo to take the draw against Reeder. Reeder wins the draw cleanly. Sandriol spins at the top of the circle, walks down the near wall. Being watched by Strathman in the corner. Sandriol still with it up to the point. St. Louis D to D over to Powell. Shot, glove save. Aiden Wright, he'll hang on. Linesman Jordan Stachelski quickly to the blue paint. Make sure... Everybody behaves themselves. 2.30 left in the first period. If Youngstown can get down in the, in the zone here, get something set up, it would be a great opportunity to tie this one up here late in the first period. As the Phantoms win the draw behind their cage, it's Strathman up ahead for Ronaldo, knocked off the puck by Sandrell, but got it to Marin, out to center, couldn't find Rusinski, taken away by the Saints. They'll break it back ahead. Sandrell took a hit, his stick went flying. Phantoms going to get called for a penalty on that one. Back into the neutral zone as nobody was at the point. Saints lucky that one didn't <laughs> end up, you know, going geometrically into their net. As Sandrell was just lazily going back for his stick as... They blew the whistle. I didn't yeah. see if Phantoms touch it, but interference going to be the call here on Youngstown. Uh, I believe Sam Ronaldo is the guilty party with exactly two minutes left in the first period. Faceoff looks like it'll be to the glove side of Aiden Wright. And just based on last power play, Dubuque's going to be looking for those one-times on, on the on the uh, you know, on the face-off. So you got to be ready for that here if you're Youngstown. And they love to feed it to the bumper too, as here just right in between the circles was Vizen and couldn't get the puck to settle down for him to get the shot away. Vizen and at the line feeds it over to Sandriel, top of the left circle. 
Side of the net reader, tried to feed it in front. Osborne knocked it away. It's loose somewhere in the blue paint. Finally, Wright found it and put his trapper on top of it as Reeder gets a couple of shots in on Tory Pittner. Linesman in to separate them. Great job there by the Phantoms defense to keep the Dubuque sticks as far out of the blue paint as they could there. It's like they had a little wedge around yeah. the, the outside of the blue paint. Yeah, and that's something you got to think if, if, you know, Coach, Coach Ward has talked about since last night. I know it's just, a, you know, the next day it's hard to kind of get a new strategy put together, but one of those things where you got to figure out a way to keep the, keep the crease clean and, and keep right able to see the puck. As Youngstown won that defensive zone draw and got the clear back into the zone, come the Saints. Reeder feeds it across to the far side for Sandrial. To Arendt, to Reeder's side of the goal. Back to Sandrial, left circle center point for Visenit. He got the low wrist redirected by Aaron, went to Pittner, he'll bank it out to center. 50 seconds gone on this Adams Free Preservation penalty kill. As Visen played it off the stick of Rusinski. Over to Aaron, but denied entry of the zone by Serrato. Back out to center. Serrato went down. No, they did call the penalty. Couldn't find referee Chaz Naki out there, and they're going to call, I believe, Charlie Aaron for a trip. Who does not seem to believe it. That'll wipe out the last 59 seconds of the power play. And there are exactly 59 seconds left in the period. So we'll skate the remainder of this first frame at four on four, and then Youngstown will have a minute and one second power play when we begin the middle period. And I'd like to think that al although Dubuque has the, fi the firepower, you know, Youngstown has a little bit more speed to them, so I'd like to think that this would may maybe have more of an advantage to Youngstown than Dubuque here. As Serrano wins the draw, Ramos, his shot went high and wide, well over the net, hustling over to the rebound are the Saints, that's Seamus Powell in the right corner. Into that corner, Serrato played the buck. DeHaro pinching in on the play. Below the goal line, he's pinned to the wall and double teamed. And Paulson comes away with the puck and floats it out to center. He'll bounce it ahead, but couldn't get it past Strathman. That's Malbuff, and now Malbuff just going to try to take Strathman to the wall. Strat able to muscle it free and got it to Ramos at center. Ahead for Serrato, coming down the right side. Serrato tried to feed it across to DeHaro. was broken up as it turned into a mini two-on-one. Here, Serrato pokes it free of the scrum, plays it off of Strathman, who keeps the zone. Strat down the right side, right dot, shot, missed the net. Hard off the corner glass and all the way down into the Youngstown zone with 10 seconds left in the first period. Dubuque quickly to the line change. DeHaro peeks at the clock as he hits the red line. Into the zone he comes, fed it down low for Young. Two seconds and one goes behind the net, and that will do it for the first period of play. Dubuque gets a goal from Be Beckett Hendrickson 34 seconds in. And that is the goal that has stood up right now as the Fighting Saints have a one to nothing lead. Shots on goal in the first period, nine to seven in favor of Dubuque. We're gonna go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll have the first intermission report here for you on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. The Mahoning Valley's leader for golf, Milk Creek Golf Course is now booking tee times for 2024. We offer stay and play opportunities available with nine area hotel partners. For more information, visit our website at millcreekmetroparks.org. Also, look for new exciting opportunities coming soon, including an indoor player development center with Trackman, an indoor Callaway club fitting center, and an Odyssey fitting studio in 2024. Follow us on Facebook at Milk Creek Golf Course or call 330-740-7112. At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck, Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110, and go Phantoms! Passion. Talent development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand score! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. Score! And Tori Krupp were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! 
When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. The Double Tree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Youngstown Phantoms. Located in downtown's historical standby building and fully updated with today's amenities while preserving its historical charm and neoclassical architecture of 1907. Offering modern conveniences such as on-site room service, free Wi-Fi, complimentary business center, and a 24-hour fitness center. Events are also memorable with over 5,000 square feet of meeting space, including our top floor ballroom accented by 13-foot ceilings, Palladian windows, and views from 12 stories up. Conveniently located within walking distance to the Cavelli Center, the Youngstown Foundation Amphitheater, Youngstown State University, Oh Wow Science Center, and Dior Performing Arts Center, the Double Tree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is a proud partner of the Youngstown Phantoms and invites you to be our valued guest. Get a me dream. Get me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get me drain at 330 758 5031 and get it fixed fast. Call now 330 758 5031. Show off your Youngstown pride by sporting the latest in Phantoms gear. Don't know where to get it? Head over to youngstownphantoms.com and click on the team shop link for the latest in jerseys, hats, t shirts, hoodies, and more. Let everyone know that you're the biggest Phantoms fan around. And be sure to stop by the Dunkin' Donuts team shop next time you're at the Cavelli Center. Head to youngstownfans.com and visit the team shop today. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center for the first intermission report at the end of 20 minutes to play. The Youngstown Phantoms trail the Dubuque Fighting Saints by the score of one to nothing. Shots on goal from that first period, nine to seven in favor of Dubuque who got on the board with their second shot of the game just 34 seconds into this one. Beckett Hendrickson put home the rebound of Fisher Scott's shot from the left point for Hendrickson, his 19th of the season and first as a member of the Dubuque Fighting Saints. That was the only goal that we have to talk about. There were five penalties in the first period. Lucas St. Louis called for high sticking at 157. Tory Pittner called for interference at 931. Andrew King called for tripping at 1227. Sam Renault called for interference at the 18 minute mark. And then Charlie Aaron called for tripping at 1901. We ended the first period with 59 seconds of four on four. Sam Renal has been set free of the sin bin, and Youngstown will have a minute and one second on their third power play of the game when we resume the second period. Kevin Raylor stopped seven out of seven. Aiden Wright stopped nine out of 10. Dubuque power play is 0 for two. Youngstown power play also 0 for two, and they will be beginning their third power play when we start the second period, as I just mentioned. Going to go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard here for you on Western Reserve Radio. And Signature Granite in North Lima is your go-to in the countertop trade. We provide workmanship for both residential and commercial markets. In need of a new look in your kitchen, bathroom, bar, or any other countertop installation? Look no further. Our services include measurements, handcrafted custom fabrication, complete installation, custom edge finishing, and outdoor bars, and much more. For a free estimate, call 330-549-9770 and make your next project a signature. Just like the Phantoms, HBK, CPAs, and consultants know every successful team needs a winning game plan. Count on the professionals at HBK CPAs and consultants, HBK's wealth advisors, and HBK valuation and litigation support for all of your personal and business tax, audit, assurance, financial planning, business consulting, and wealth management needs. For more than 65 years, the HBK family of firms have been advising thousands of clients on how to grow and protect their wealth. Contact them today so they can help you and your team do the same. Call 758-8613 or visit hbkcpa.com to learn how. 
Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. As a premier real estate team in the Mahoney Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach provides the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, powered by people. Member FDIC. Veterans, the Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including Veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. This prize is what you could win on the new $5 Wheel of Fortune scratch-off from the Ohio Lottery. There's only one letter missing at the end of B-I-G-M-O-N-E. <clears throat> Why, yes, uh, the answer is big money. $100,000 big money. And if you don't win, you can enter for a chance to attend a Wheel of Fortune live taping where you could win more big prizes. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Play responsibly. Wheel of Fortune is a trademark of Califon Productions. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future together. We are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. Feeling dehydrated or sluggish? Did you enjoy your Phantoms game just a little too much? We can help you get back on track and hydrated in record time. With our vitamin-infused IV drips, we'll have you feeling healthy and energized so you can get back to your busy schedule. Whether you want to boost your immune system, increase your energy, or stay healthy through the winter months, we can help. Find us on Facebook or theyoungstowndrip.com and book your appointment today. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center during the first intermission report here in Youngstown. The Fighting Saints have a one to nothing lead. Let's take a look at the out of town scoreboard. We'll start here in the USHL. Minute and a half into the second period in Plymouth. The Madison Capitals have a 1-0 lead over the U18. Sioux Falls with a 3-0 lead over the Fargo Force. As Sioux Falls downed Fargo 5-2 last night. Sioux Falls going for the weekend sweep at Shields Arena. Scoreless after one in Kearney between the Lincoln Stars and Tri-City Storm. Seven minutes into the first period. In Sioux City and Des Moines and the Musketeers are scoreless. Muskegon leads Waterloo two to nothing as Waterloo also on their final game of a three and three. And getting underway in the next 20 minutes, the Omaha Lancers will be in Chicago to battle the steel and the U-17s will take on the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders for the second night in a row. Let's take a look at the college hockey scoreboard. Atlantic Hockey Tournament time, and Canisius has a four to nothing lead over Mercyhurst. Army and Niagara knotted up at a goal apiece, and Robert Morris leads Bentley one to nothing at the first intermission. 
Senior night up in Marquette, Michigan, and the Northern Michigan Wildcats lead the Bowling Green Falcons 1-0. Michigan Tech all over St. Thomas 5-0. Minnesota State and Bemidji State are scoreless. Bemidji State clinched the CCHA regular season trophy last night. Princeton leads Clarkson 1-0. Cornell up 2-0 over RPI. Union and Colgate tied at 1. Quinnipiac leads St. Lawrence 2-0. Yale and Dartmouth knotted up at a goal apiece. Earlier this evening, Northeastern beat UConn 4-2. UMass Lowell leads UMass 3-2. Maine and Vermont knotted at one. Second period just underway in Burlington. Denver with a 1-0 lead over St. Cloud State. Nodak with a 1-0 lead over Western Michigan. Omaha and Miami scoreless after one. Minnesota Duluth and Colorado College getting ready to get underway. Penn State ruins senior day in Columbus. They down the Buckeyes 2-1. Getting underway in about a half hour. Michigan will be in the Twin Cities to take on Minnesota. And Michigan State clinched the Big Ten regular season title last night, but they still have one more game left in Madison. They're taking on the Badgers tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern. And then some non-conference action. Long Island up 1-0 over Arizona State. Alaska Anchorage leads Stonehill 3-1. And Alaska Fairbanks leads Augustana one to nothing. Let's take a look at the NHL scoreboard. Blues lead the Wild two to one at the end of the second. Predators up two to one over the Avalanche at the end of the second. End of the first period in Buffalo, the Sabres lead the Golden Knights one to nothing. Two minutes left in the first in Toronto, the Rangers lead the Maple Leafs one to nothing. End of the first in Tampa, the Habs have a two to nothing lead over the Lightning. Philadelphia leads Ottawa 1-0 at the end of the first. Halfway through the first on Long Island as the Islanders lead the Bruins 2-0. Earlier this afternoon, the Jets 5-3 winners over the Hurricanes. Panthers blank the Red Wings 4-0. Oilers win 2-1 over the Kraken. Later tonight, the Sharks will be in Dallas to take on the Stars. The Blue Jackets will be in Chicago to take on the Blackhawks. And the late game will be between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Calgary Flames as Calgary is retiring the jersey of Mika Kiprasov tonight. That'll do it for the out talent scoreboard and the first intermission report. We're going to go ahead and step aside for a timeout. Youngstown will be on the power play when we resume the second period here on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. Passion. Talent. Development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand scores! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. Score! And Tori Krupp were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! The Double Tree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Youngstown Phantoms. Located in downtown's historical standby building and fully updated with today's amenities while preserving its historical charm and neoclassical architecture of 1907. Offering modern conveniences such as on-site room service, free Wi-Fi, complimentary business center, and a 24-hour fitness center. Events are also memorable with over 5,000 square feet of meeting space, including our top floor ballroom accented by 13-foot ceilings, Palladian windows, and views from 12 stories up. Conveniently located within walking distance to the Cavelli Center, the Youngstown Foundation Amphitheater, Youngstown State University, Oh Wow Science Center, and Dior Performing Arts Center, the Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is a proud partner of the Youngstown Phantoms and invites you to be our valued guest. Just like the Phantoms, HBK, CPAs, and consultants know every successful team needs a winning game plan. Count on the professionals at HBK CPAs and consultants, HBK's wealth advisors, and HBK valuation and litigation support for all of your personal and business tax, audit, assurance, financial planning, business consulting, and wealth management needs. For more than 65 years, the HBK family of firms have been advising thousands of clients on how to grow and protect their wealth. Contact them today so they can help you and your team do the same. Call 758-8613 or visit hbkcpa.com to learn how. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. 
People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you, who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, Veterans, powered by people. Member FDIC. County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including Veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. Show off your Youngstown pride by sporting the latest in Phantoms gear. Don't know where to get it? Head over to youngstownphantoms.com and click on the Team Shop link for the latest in jerseys, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Let everyone know that you're the biggest Phantoms fan around. And be sure to stop by the Dunkin' Donuts Team Shop next time you're at the Cavelli Center. Head to youngstownphantoms.com and visit the Team Shop today. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Gavelli Center for the start of the second period. Dubuque leads the Phantoms 1-0, a goal 34 seconds in for Beckett Hendrickson. His first as a member of the Fighting Saints was acquired by Dubuque on Monday from Sioux Falls. And things aren't looking so bad in Sioux Falls right now there. No. Up three to nothing on the Fargo Force who are running away with the Anderson Cup race, running away with the race for the top seed in the Western Conference. In fact, they are threatening many USHL records as far as points in a season go for a team, wins in a season. But we still have, you know, almost a quarter of the season left, believe it or not. I think, uh, what, 15 games left for the Phantoms entering tonight, so that means 14 after tonight. Just a little shy of a quarter of the season. Youngstown will be on the power play here for the opening 61 seconds, and you can roll for initiative because the second period is underway. Youngstown wins the draw. Strathman plays over to Young. Cuts the middle of the ice, Grant into the zone. Forced to the left wing corner. Tangles up with Fisher Scott. Scott pried it free from Young for a moment. Going to come up the far wall now, and Reeder will play it out to center right to Strathman. I think if Reeder would have looked up, he would have seen he could have had a two-on-one with Sondrial. As Strathman carries ahead, 30 seconds left in the power play. Serrato to Bottero into the zone down the left wall. Up to the point for Strathman. Cross point. Young back to Strathman. Bottero right circle. Shot. Hit a body in front. That was Adam Patilla. Came back to Bottero. Over to Strathman, 15 seconds left in the power play. Young to the corner, lost his footing, but able to get it up to the point for Strathman. Strat, back down the wall for Young. Five seconds left in the power play. Side of the net, Patilla, Bottero, fed it through the legs of Charlie Serrato. It's gonna go out the center and out of the box comes Charlie Aaron. Youngstown power play 0 for three. Strathman D to D over to Osborne, out the center for Serrato. Charlie ran into some interference from Aaron, and Dubuque will play it down to the Youngstown end, but this will be icing on the Fighting Saints as they were not able to complete their line change at the end of the penalty kill. Scott and Weisenden have been out here since the puck drop that began the second period. Second period presented by CSL Plasma. Yeah, and if you're, if you're the Swarsinski line here, you really got to take advantage of that after the icing especially after a two-minute power play, or sorry, one minute of the power play, I should say. As Ronaldo wins the draw, Rusinski went for a hand pass to Marin. That would have been blown dead, but the Saints will bring it ahead anyway. Aaron from the neutral zone throws one on that right. will make the pad save into the near corner. Osborne will carry ahead, danced away from one check, played it up to the line for Marin. He'll send it off the end wall. Going to bounce off the back of the cage, came to Powell, sent it to the right corner, taken by Rusinski. Rue up to the point for DeHaro. Uses his skates to keep it in as he's on his offhand. Send it down low, but Powell pinched Ronaldo off the puck, and Malbuff will send it up the far side. Noah to the line for Barron. He'll get it to center for Paulson. Danced away from the check of Marin. Played it to the line for Noah. Back to Paulson. Tried to feed it in front. Had a man crashing the weak side. As penalty up coming on the play. High sticking call. I believe on Ronaldo. 
No, it's going to be on Dubuque as referee Chaz Naki checking the chicklets of Lou Gosburn. Could not get the number there. Two minutes for high sticking. 25 thinks Dave Ferris. It is 15, Noah Powell. <laughs> you, yes, Dave, you got 50% of the number right. <laughs> we strive for, for perfection here on Western Reserve Radio, which still wonders how I'm employed. <laughs> Face off to the right of Raylor, won by Youngstown. Bottero back to the point for Strathman. Feathered over to Young. Jumped on by Malbuff, and the puck floats out to center. Yeah, just strong pressure there by Dubu Dubuque to force that to start anything for Youngstown. Strathman will carry ahead, thought about the drop pass. Instead, will carry to the official's crease and send it to the right wing corner. First one to it is Reader. Couldn't feed it up the walls. It comes back to Seamus Powell off the window and out of play. So offensive zone drop coming for Youngstown. 27 seconds into their fourth power play of the game. Don't know why, but linesman Joshua Rosenbaum said no, that faceoff needs to come out to center, but there was no Youngstown <laughs> stick anywhere near that clearing attempt by Powell. Faceoff will be to the left of Raidler, who has stopped eight out of eight. Yeah, I was just about to say, Raylor being a very big goalie in that, you gotta get some gotta get some bodies in front. Clog the lanes and, and get some socks up just to block just to block his vision. As Youngstown wins the draw, Serato to the point for Strathman. Heavy pressure here at the points by Dubuque this time. Botterill to Serato, bumped out to Strathman. Young, one timer blocked by Scott. Comes over to the right corner for Botterill. Botterill, right dot, shot blocked by Weisenit. Viral gets his own rebound, sends it to the point for Strathman. Couldn't keep it in the zone as Strat was also on his off wing. Tried to use his skates, couldn't keep the line. Now Young will come back in. Dropped it behind him to Botterill. Now to Strathman. Strat turned, fires redirected by Young, and it went wide. Scott poked it behind the cage for Visenin. Sends it up the far wall. Giuliani will jump on it and send it down the length of the sheet. Dubuque to the line change. 40 seconds left in the power play for Youngstown. Strathman carries ahead, trying to shed Sandrell. Enters the zone, still with it. Strathman pulls up in the left corner. Up the wall, Sandrell took it away and got it out to neutral. Pittner hustling back for it. Reeder tried to jump around him, but Torrey able to wedge him off as Rusinski will give it back to Pittner. Torrey fanned on the pass as he brought it into the zone. So Youngstown offside. Now they're touch up and try to resume the attack as Reeder will clear it at least to the stomach of Birchall in front of the Phantoms bench. Drops it back to Pittner in their own zone. Six seconds left in the power play. Youngstown going to let this one go by the wayside as well as carrying ahead is Birchall. Mikey drops it back to the point for Osborne. Over to Pittner, near side. Side of the cage. Ronaldo redirected it to the end wall. Sam stepped out, fired off the crossbar. Ronaldo inches from tying the game for the Phantoms as Reeder brings it ahead. He just spun around and just, just decided to shoot it, and that's a great shot right there. Just throwing the goalie off his, off his, uh, off his game. Noah Powell sent it far side, looking for Lucas St. Louis as penalty on the Phantoms, a slash as Youngstown was trying to get down on the break. Slash called behind the play. Tory Pittner, the guilty party. And Matt, that's one thing, you know, some players obviously don't like the calls, but the biggest thing here, especially against a team like the Buke, you got to you got to stay, you got to stay disciplined and, and make sure you have no chance of getting any penalties called on you. I've just seen the replay three times, and I have no idea what Torrey Pittner did on that play. As Youngstown wins the draw, they'll clear it to the line, but Sheamus keeps the zone. Played over to Cornforth, back to Sheamus at the point. Over to the right side for Paulson. Dubuque has it in the corner. To Powell in the slotty fan on it. Fed into the blue paint by Cornforth. Popped up in the air. Noah knocks it behind the net off his glove. He'll gather it in himself and send it back up to the point for Sheamus. Over to Cornforth. To Noah. Fan on the pass, still has it. Noah, side of the cage, gives it over to Cornforth near half. Center point. Sheamus over to Paulson, side of the cage for Hendrickson. 
fed it through the slot, was looking for Seamus, who had cre creeped in from the point. Pass was out of his reach, went down into the Youngstown zone. Seamus out to center for Paulson, into the zone come the Saints. Dropped over to Hendrickson, right down the middle he goes. His shot was blocked, rebound loose near the blue paint, swept to the wall by Burchill. Mikey turning on the Jets, but Seamus beat him back to the puck. Seamus Powell trying to lose Burchill in his own zone. Send it up the far wall for Paulson, and Mikey's going to hustle over to the bench. 45 seconds left on the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. As ahead comes Sandriol into the zone, but offside are the Dubuque Fighting Saints. Actually, I thought they might have had too many men on the ice there for a second. Looks like offside will be the call, though. So neutral zone draw, 42 seconds left in the kill for Youngstown. Yeah, and, and Matt, that's one thing I really like about Mikey Birchall. He brings that blazing speed and likes to bring pressure on any play like that. So great pressure by him to force Dubuque all the way back in his own zone. Very good with his stick, stick too, makes him a great penalty mm -hmm. killer as Sandro wins the draw in the neutral zone to St. Louis. To Vizen at his own zone. Ahead for Aaron, spins at the red line. As Weisenden set a pick on Botterill, nothing called, played ahead. As the puck goes off the glass, out of play. Twenty-three seconds left in the kill for Youngstown. And they're going to say that clear was off a Dubuque stick and bring the face off out to center. So Sandriel to take the draw again against Grant Young. This one will be won by Young. Wilson looking for time and space in his zone. Sends it off the far glass and down the ice. Don't know if Dubuque can touch it. Yes, they can. Thought there might have been a high stick on the puck as St. Louis gives it up to Patilla. who will just float it to the right wing corner of his own zone. Five seconds left as Weisenden goes for a dive and Grant Young is going to be guilty of a tripping call here as Sandriol sends it off the skates of Raidler. Thought that Dubuque probably had too yeah. many men on the ice there. As Dubuque fooling around in their own zone, got to be <laughs> careful. Saw what happened to the Penguins a couple of weeks ago. Exactly. Cavelli center crowd voicing their displeasure with Chaz Naki as Univisen was already on his way down when. Looks like another one's going to be called here too. Grant Young's stick was near him. We'll have our media timeout. Youngstown will be back on the PK on the other side of this media break. 13.06 left in the second. Dubuque leads 1-0. Listen to Youngstown Phantom Talk on West Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Matt Lipsack and Brendan Miller here on the broadcast for you this evening. Youngstown heading back to the PK. Grant Young in the box for tripping. Golden Glove being given out to Univisident. If you don't get the joke, watch last night's Phantoms post-game interview as Dubuque wins the draw. Right wall, it's Hendrickson into the corner for Paulson. Back to the point for Seamus Powell. Through the legs of Paulson, and rolls into the right wing corner. Hendrickson gets there first. Feeds it to Noah. Back behind the cage for Hendrickson. Over to Cornforth. Back to the point for Seamus. Right side for Paulson. Into the corner for Hendrickson. Tried to feed it through the box. Hit off the stick of Strathman and came over to the Saints. Right circle. Paulson, right corner, Hendrickson. Back to Paulson. He'll trade places with Hendrickson. Tried to feed it into the box again as Powell chipped it on net. Didn't get anything on it. Was going wide and went into the glove of Aiden Wright. He'll hang on as Noah Powell and 
Tory Pittner need to be separated by the linesman. 39 seconds gone on this penalty kill for the Phantoms. Yeah, and unlike last night, Matt, you know, Dubuque's power play just kind of seems off to me. You know, unlike unlike yesterday, I should say. Just a little bit moving around too much, not, you know, too much passing. And sometimes when they try to get something set up, Youngstown's right there to, to block any passes or any lanes. Fourth power play of the game for Dubuque. Youngstown has already had four in here. They win the faceoff. Puck is sent off the glass and down the ice by Luke Osborne. Serato pressuring Visenin. He'll throw it near side for Sandriel. Top power play unit on for Dubuque now. Sandriel around the kick plate to St. Louis. Sent back to the near side. Sandriel battling against Taharo. Puck loose in the left circle. Taharo chipped it up the wall. Visenin going to keep. Down the wall looking for Sandriel again. Back to Visenin. Over to the right point for St. Louis. Rolls off of him and into the corner. Rusinski battling for it there. In comes Aaron as well. Lucas St. Louis, the defenseman, sends it up the wall to Aaron. To the point for Visenin. 38 seconds left in the power play. Sandriel, side of the cage. Gave it up to Reeder. Tried to get it back to him, but the pass redirected out to center by Youngstown. Visenin, back to Sandriel, to Reeder. Centering feed over everybody. Picked up by Lucas St. Louis on the far wall. 19 seconds left in the power play. St. Louis, right corner. To Visenin, one-timer, glove save by Aiden Wright, and the rebound cleared the length of the sheet by Connor DeHaro. Youngstown gets three fresh penalty killers on the ice as Bottero applies a little four-check pressure, and out of the box comes Grant Young. The tree has been preserved. Romeo into the zone, swinging out to the left. Carries it behind the net. Knocked off the puck by Wilson. Up the far wall for Bottero. He got leg whipped and a penalty upcoming on Dubuque as there's the touch in front by Romeo. As Hanrahan takes Romeo to the boards and that will draw the whistle. Heading to the box without complaint. Josh Giuliani. Rare enough to see somebody head to the box without complaint tonight, Brendan. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. There's been a lot of penalties tonight, and and you know, just the game of hockey. There's always the chatter of, you know, did I do that? Did I do that type of thing? But you know, Th that one I think Giuliani <laughs> know he knew he did. Uh, we have played, let's see, 20 plus 9, 12. We played 29 minutes and 12 seconds, and there have been nine power plays. And and, and for Youngstown, this is one you got to score on here. You know, 10 10 48 left here in the second period. You got to get on the board here. Second power play unit going to start for Youngstown and they win the draw. Birchall feeds it down the wall, going to come to Marin in the corner. Zach forces it over to the far side for Pittner. Up to the point for Osborne. Top of the right circle, Birchall. Fed it to Marin. Comes up the near wall. Being watched by Fisher Scott. Scott took it away. Bounced it into the circle. Diving effort by Rusinski as it comes to the slot and Malbuff plays it down the ice. Hustling back for it is Osborne. Took a couple slashes from Reeder. As Reeder has his stick around Osborne. And Chasnocki says, this is fine. Phantoms bring it into the zone four on three, but offside are the Youngstown Phantoms. 10.04 left in the second period. Just a very, I, I, the way I'm going to say this is very odd game today. Just a very odd game. You know, both both teams going back and forth, trading blows, and a lot of things just, you know, not going one way for one team. And 116 left in the power play. Top power play unit out now for Youngstown. Powell to take the draw against Serato. Charlie won it, but bouncing around, it comes to the Saints, and Scott from the slot of his own zone is going to send it down the ice. Past the halfway mark of regulation now. Dubuque still with the one to nothing lead. Their goal 34 seconds into regulation. Young drops it behind him for Strathman. A crossover to Serato, back to Strathman. And Strat comes into the zone. Pass knocked away by Paulson. Young trying to keep the zone. Has his stick tangled with Paulson there at the right point. Worked it free, but Powell got it loose of the scrum and played it down into the Youngstown end. 40 seconds left in the power play for Youngstown. Botterill will carry ahead. Into the zone, down the left side comes Bottero. Ryan pulls up in the left corner. Feeds it back to the point for Strathman. Andrew over to Grant Young, right circle. 
Back to Strathman. To Young. Shot off the glove of Ray. The rebound in the right corner. Patilla off the wall to Young. 15 seconds left on the power play. Strathman walks the blue line. Left circle. Botterill shot blocked. Came back to him. Botterill looking for an option. Fed it down low for Serato. Charlie walks the goal line. Tried to feed it in front. Knocked away by the Dubuque defense. Botterill couldn't clear. Four seconds left on the power play. Serato off the side of the net. Bouncing puck. It's in Reader's skates. Still can't find it. Botterill gets control. Out of the box comes Giuliani. Fed through the slot. Patilla one-timer off the side of the net. Dubuque back to full strength. As coming ahead are the Saints, four on two. Patilla trying to get back in the play, make it four on three. Across over to Sandrell, his shot is blocked. Great hustle by the Phantoms who have to be absolutely gassed. Fed ahead to Haro, gonna beat out the icing whistle. Raylor worming well out of the blue paint. Able to play it ahead to Giuliani. Up ahead come the Saints, King looking for Barron. Back to King, couldn't take the shot. Phantoms get away with allowing a two on oh. Yeah, remember those plays right there, Matt. Might be the difference later on in the game tonight. Fed up the wall, kept by Giuliani. His shot, glove saved by Aiden Wright. And he's going to smartly <laughs> hang on to that one. We'll have immediate timeout. 8.03 left in the second. Dubuque still leading one to nothing. Listen to Youngstown Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future together. We are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Gavelli Center. 8.03 left in the second. Dubuque leads 1-0. Face off in the defensive zone of coming for Youngstown. Face off will be to the glove side of Aiden Wright. Draw one by Ronaldo. Slapped around the window and out to center. Off of Veronin. Trickles behind the cage for Ramos. Hunter feeds it up the wall to Osborne. Back down the wall to Ramos. Looked for some space. Got a shot away, but blocked into the meshing by Barron. So puck out of play. Face off upcoming in the offensive zone for Youngstown. They're going to drop the puck to the left of Raidler. Fim's going to leave this unit out here. No line change, in fact, either side. So King will take the draw against Ronaldo. Lines been taking his time with this one. Ronaldo wins the draw cleanly. DeHaro keeps it in at the point. Backhanded down to Ronaldo in the corner. Sam ducked around the check of King. Veronin picked up the puck, trying to get it away from Vizen. Kicked it free. Kuzma catches up to it in the left corner. Up the wall, fed it to Osborne. Little bobble, back down low. Comes to Ronaldo. No, picked away from him nicely by Vizen. Up the wall to Barron, off the glass, out to center. Found Frank at the red line, knocked away from him by Ronaldo. Sam battling for it in front of the debut bench, taken away by Frank. He'll give it back to Barron. Top of the left circle, he'll feed it down low to Frank. Over to King behind the cage, but picked off by Osborne. Fed it up the far side, kept at the line by Seamus Powell. Fed over to Vizenin, who had sneaked in on the play, up to the point, kept in by Barron. Saints behind the Youngstown cage. Up to the point for Vizenin. D to D over to Seamus Powell. Fed it into the slot, knocked away by Youngstown. Kept at the near point by Vizenin, but Ramos will pick off his pass and feed it out to center. Vizen will wind it back up from the red line while Dubuque gets a couple of fresh bodies on the ice. Vizen shot wide of the cage. Off the end wall, it bounces to Merrill. Cornforth behind the goal line. Knocked off the puck, taken away by DeHaro and out to center. Ahead comes Botterill. Botterill through the hip check of Lucas St. Louis but couldn't catch up to the puck. Hendrickson will gather it in behind his own cage, feed it to Powell. D to D over to St. Louis, near side, out to center. Off the stick of Hanrahan, it bounced to Merrill. 
and then knocked ahead for Hendrickson. Wedged off by Ramos, played the line for Patilla. Patilla carries ahead three on three, trying to work his way right down the middle, ripped down, nothing called as Patilla goes sliding into the cage. Cavelli center crowd looking for a call, but because Patilla is the one that knocked the net off, the faceoff will come out to center. 6.04 left in the second period. Dubuque still with that one to nothing lead. Shots on goal are 14 to 10 in favor of Dubuque. Yeah, and speaking of, of shots, Matt, you know, Youngstown has to get something going here. They have to get some shots on net. Just find anything in front of the net, cross the net, whatever you got to do. Just got to get something here. If the shot counter on the big board is to be believed, we just had seven, we've only had seven shots in the period. Dubuque with a four to three lead in the frame in that category. As Youngstown wins the neutral zone draw, but Hammerhand can't dump it in. Coming away with it is Noah Powell. Into the Youngstown end, down the right side, tried to center, went off of Paulson and back to the right wing corner. Behind the cage, it's Grant Young, shoving it to the near side, hustling over for it is Paulson, plays it away from Patilla. Out toward the right point now for St. Louis. He'll pick it up on the right half. Well, float one toward the cage. Missed it well wide. Giuliani sends it to the line for Desiderio. His shot hit his own man in front. That was Paulson. Phantom's going to try to hustle down the ice here. Patilla working his way toward the net. Got the shot away. Kicked out by Raylor. Young chipped it back in front. Raylor gloves it back below the goal line. Over to the near wall for Patilla. Left it there. Bottero being double teamed by Desiderio. And Desiderio... And Giuliani Desiderio got the puck out to center. Powell ahead into the zone. Forced wide nicely by Strathman. Powell still with it near half wall. Tried to make a pass across. Phantoms broke it up and they'll come ahead. Youngstown up to the line, but Veronin missed time the zone entry. Strathman had to spin right at the blue line. Youngstown had to break off their rush. Redirected now into the zone by Birchall. Back to Veronin. Trying to get it back down the wall to Birchall. Hit off his back and Dubuque will get the clear. Out to center, it's Strathman playing it over to Pittner. Up the near side, hit the back of Serato as they try to enter the zone. Youngstown is very much offside here. As Veronin touches it, and then gets put down by Fisher Scott, but Chaznaki says there's nothing wrong with that. 440 left in the second period. Faceoff will be in the neutral zone. Right in front of the Phantoms bench, just outside the Dubuque line, Sandriel to take the draw against Ronaldo. Ronaldo wins the draw, Pittner rips it into the zone, but hit Dubuque bodies on the entry and settled down for the Saints to get the clear. Visenin ahead to the line for Reeder. Off of Sandriel, it bounced to Hendrickson, played back to Visenin at the right point. Bison in the right corner, tried to feed it in front, chipping at it is Sandri all in right. Had to make a couple of nice saves there. Hart skipped the beat for a minute. I thought <laughs> Sandri was putting his arms up in the air to celebrate a goal. Looked like he got a stick up into the face area. I believe that's why he put his hands up like that. Just not sure if they're gonna call anything. Only one with his arm up is Linesman. Believe not then. I think that's Jordan Stachelski over there in the right circle of the Youngstown end getting ready to drop the puck. Face off will be to the glove side of Aiden Wright. 418 left in the second. Dubuque wins the draw. Sandrell couldn't get a shot away in the slot, played it over to Scott. At the near wall, Sandrell over to keep the play alive for the Fighting Saints. Around to the far side now. Serato took the puck out of the scrum, played it out to center for Veronin, who ran into Visenin, but Dubuque back into the zone with the puck. They'll throw it to the left wing corner. Scott to the half wall. Feeds it down low, looking for Reeder. Serato bumped him, but it's fed back up to the point for Scott. D to D over to Visenin. His shot blocked by Veronin. Down to the half wall for Reeder. Pop, popped up in the air. Reeder jumped up and gloved it down. As play continues, Serato pried it free, got hooked. 
bounces off of Serrato's shins and out to center. Scott back to the line for Reeder. Tried to drop it behind him for Sondrial. He got wedged. And Youngstown will get control. He'll snap it out to center for Young. Ahead to the line for DeHaro to whack it into the zone. Youngstown to the line change. Scott, stretch pass ahead. Found a man at the line, but forced back out to center by the hustle of Jack Wilson. Rolled to Weisenen. Played ahead to Cornforth. Three minutes left in the third. Dubuque still with a 1-0 lead. Cornforth forced to the corner by Hanrahan. Paulson off of Aaron. His shot wide. Comes to the right corner. Phantoms fed it up the wall. Botterill gets it out to the neutral zone, but it's going to roll to St. Louis. No, sorry, Malbuff at his own line. To Frank. And then over to Seamus Powell. Off of Frank. Ran into his own man as the puck squirts to Wilson. Jack ahead to Young into the zone. Grant swings wide, drops it back for the one-timer by Patilla. But right there on the angle is Raidler to squeeze it and hang on. 2.29 left in the second. Youngstown will have an offensive zone faceoff. Yeah, now from Coach Ward here, set up a play, something like something from the uh, from the half wall or something like that. Get someone wide open in the circle here. Make Raider move around and around. Just, just get everyone moving. Get everyone out of position. Faceoff will be to the left of Raidler. Off the draw, Dubuque trying to get control. Powell played it to line, two on one developing as ahead come Merrill and Giuliani. Rusinski hustling back, pass away, but great work there by Rusinski to force Giuliani wide. He couldn't get the shot away or really even take the pass cleanly. Ronaldo to the line, kept by Malbuff, bumped it down low, right to the stick of Strathman, played ahead for Rusinski, over to Ronaldo, down the right side, spins at the half. In front, Marin, toe drag, and never got a shot away. Maybe if he could have just one touch that on the net, but body was a little out of position as Merrill brings it into the zone. His shot is blocked by Strathman, picked up by the Phantoms. Carrying to the red line was Marin, sent it into the Dubuque end, but Powell, will be there on the retrieval and out to center for Merrill. Into the zone, come the Saints back across for Romeo, try to feed it back down low for a crashing Merrill, but Youngstown will bring it back through center. Marin into the zone, but offside are the Youngstown Phantoms. One twenty-five left in this second period. Dubuque's goal, 34 seconds into regulation, still holding up right now. Shots are 6-5 to five Youngstown in the period. And this Face off one forward by Serrato. Sorry, Brendan. No, you're as fine. We, we get back to action. Dick played it into the Youngstown end right from behind the net. We'll try to fire it around the far wall. He will get it out to center. Played back in the zone by Dick. Dubuque is offside. They'll have to touch up as Osborne carries ahead. Osborne right up the middle. Played it over to Burchill. Tried to get it back to Osborne. Just inches out of his reach to try to redirect it home. Dick lost it as he came up the far wall. He ran into Verona and able to regather and bounce it out to center. Puck bouncing around the other line. Paulson shot off the pad of Aiden Wright. To the far wall, Youngstown. To DeHaro. Into the zone, he'll whack it around the cage. Just missed Serato hustling over Verona and it came to Patilla. Patilla, sharp angle shot, Raylor save, rebound chipped wide by Serato. Charlie up to the point for Osborne. Luke walks the line, flicked a shot on net. Patilla with the redirect, Raylor with the save. Saints to the rebound and they will ice the puck if this has enough steam on it. No, they're gonna say DeHaro had to play it before the goal line. Connor sent it ahead with 20 seconds left in the period. Osborne carried to the red line, sent it on net, and Raidler will cover and hang on. 14.3 left in the second. Phantoms with a couple of nice chances. Just nothing behind Raidler yet, who's currently pitching a 16 save shutout. Yeah, Matt, what I was going to say earlier was that the Serato line <laughs> was one of those lines with, with uh, Kuzma Veronin. That line just seems to have every every chance uh, every chance on the net. So that was one thing I was going to say is look at the, look for that line to get something started. And they all already had some momentum going for a little bit. Young to take the draw against Reader to the right of Raidler. 
Reeder wins the draw to Visenden, floats over to the wall, sends it up to center. Picked up at the red line by Jack Wilson, 10 seconds left in the period. Back ahead was looking for Bottero, played ahead by Visenden to Hendrickson. Into the zone down the right side, drop back to Visenden. His stick tangled nicely by Patilla, and Bottero will just skate it to open ice as we have the buzzer of the second period. No goals in the middle frame, and Dubuque still holds a one to nothing lead. Shots on goal for the game. Big board shows 16 aside, and if that's accurate, that means Youngstown outshot Dubuque nine to six in the second period. We're gonna go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll have the second intermission report here for you on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. The Mahoning Valley's leader for golf, Milk Creek Golf Course is now booking tee times for 2024. We offer stay and play opportunities available with nine area hotel partners. For more information, visit our website at millcreekmetroparks.org. Also, look for new exciting opportunities coming soon, including an indoor player development center with Trackman, an indoor Callaway club fitting center, and an Odyssey fitting studio in 2024. Follow us on Facebook at Milk Creek Golf Course or call 330-740-7112. At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck, Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110, and go Phantoms! When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. Get a new drink. Get a me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get a me Drain at 330 758 5031 and get it fixed fast. Call now 330 758 5031. Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. As a premier real estate team in the Mahoney Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach combines the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Signature Granite in North Lima is your go-to in the countertop trade. We provide workmanship for both residential and commercial markets. In need of a new look in your kitchen, bathroom, bar, or any other countertop installation? Look no further. Our services include measurements, handcrafted custom fabrication, complete installation, custom edge finishing, and outdoor bars, and much more. For a free estimate, call 330-549-9770 and make your next project a signature. This prize is what you could win on the new $5 Wheel of Fortune scratch-off from the Ohio Lottery. There's only one letter missing at the end of B-I-G-M-O-N-E. <clears throat> Why, yes, uh, the answer is big money. $100,000 big money. And if you don't win, you can enter for a chance to attend a Wheel of Fortune live taping where you could win more big prizes. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Play responsibly. Wheel of Fortune is a trademark of Califon Productions. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future together. We are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. Show off your Youngstown pride by sporting the latest in Phantoms gear. Don't know where to get it? Head over to youngstownphantoms.com and click on the Team Shop link for the latest in jerseys, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Let everyone know that you're the biggest Phantoms fan around. And be sure to stop by the Dunkin' Donuts Team Shop next time you're at the Cavelli Center. Head to youngstownphantoms.com and visit the Team Shop today. 
Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center for the second intermission report. At the end of 40 minutes of play, the Dubuque Fighting Saints still have a one to nothing lead. Shots on goal for the game, 16 apiece. Youngstown outshoots Dubuque nine to six in the second period. No goals to speak of in that second period. Our only goal so far today was scored 34 seconds into regulation about an hour and a half ago. Beckett Hendrickson on the second shot of the game. Hendrickson his first as a Fighting Saint 19th of the season. Assists went to Fisher Scott and James Reeder. And so far that one is held up. There were four power plays in the second period. In fact, Youngstown started on the power play, had a minute and one second of a power play at the two minute mark. Noah Powell was called for high sticking. Tory Pittner was called for slashing at 427. Grant Young was called for tripping at 654. And Josh Giuliani called for tripping at 912. We played 40 minutes and there have been nine power plays. So 18 of our 40 minutes, almost an entire period of this hockey game has been played with somebody shorthanded. Kevin Radler has stopped 16 out of 16 as he currently has the shutout going. Aiden Wright has stopped 15 out of 16. Dubuque power play 0 for 5. Youngstown, or Dubuque power play 0 for 4. Youngstown power play 0 for 5. Going to go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll take another look at the out-of-town scoreboard here for you on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. Passion, talent, development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand scores! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. Goal! And Tori Krupp were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! The Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Youngstown Phantoms. Located in downtown's historical standby building and fully updated with today's amenities while preserving its historical charm and neoclassical architecture of 1907. Offering modern conveniences such as on-site room service, free Wi-Fi, complimentary business center, and a 24-hour fitness center. Events are also memorable with over 5,000 square feet of meeting space, including our top floor ballroom accented by 13-foot ceilings, Palladian windows, and views from 12 stories up. Conveniently located within walking distance to the Cavelli Center, the Youngstown Foundation Amphitheater, Youngstown State University, Oh Wow Science Center, and Dior Performing Arts Center, the Double Tree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is a proud partner of the Youngstown Phantoms and invites you to be our valued guest. Just like the Phantoms, HBK, CPAs, and consultants know every successful team needs a winning game plan. Count on the professionals at HBK, CPAs, and consultants, HBK's wealth advisors, and HBK valuation and litigation support for all of your personal and business tax, audit, assurance, financial planning, business consulting, and wealth management needs. For more than 65 years, the HBK family of firms have been advising thousands of clients on how to grow and protect their wealth. Contact them today so they can help you and your team do the same. Call 758-8613 or visit hbkcpa.com to learn how. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, powered by people. Member FDIC. Veterans, the Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission is here to help you. Whether you served five years ago or 50 years ago, if you are honorably discharged from active military service, you may be eligible for benefits, including Veterans VA benefits, county financial assistance, assisted living benefits, and more. Our friendly and supportive staff is ready to help you. Go to mcveterans.org to see all of the benefits and services offered or call today. The Mahoning County Veterans Service Commission, serving those who have served. 
Feeling dehydrated or sluggish? Did you enjoy your Phantoms game just a little too much? We can help you get back on track and hydrated in record time. With our vitamin-infused IV drips, we'll have you feeling healthy and energized so you can get back to your busy schedule. Whether you want to boost your immune system, increase your energy, or stay healthy through the winter months, we can help. Find us on Facebook or theyoungstowndrip.com and book your appointment today. Show off your Youngstown pride by sporting the latest in Phantoms gear. Don't know where to get it? Head over to youngstownphantoms.com and click on the Team Shop link for the latest in jerseys, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Let everyone know that you're the biggest Phantoms fan around. And be sure to stop by the Dunkin' Donuts Team Shop next time you're at the Cavelli Center. Head to youngstownphantoms.com and visit the Team Shop today. Welcome back to Western Reserve Radio's coverage of the Youngstown Phantoms. Now here's the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Welcome back inside the Cavelli Center during the second intermission report. Dubuque with a one to nothing lead over the Youngstown Phantoms. Let's take a look at the out of town scoreboard. We'll start here in the USHL if I can find the right tab on my browser. There we go. All right. End of the second, back, in fact, third period just started at USA Hockey Arena and the Madison Capitals. Still with a one to nothing lead over the U18. Sioux Falls now leads Fargo four to nothing as they are at the second intermission. Not that this Fargo team isn't absolutely capable of overcoming a four goal deficit in one period. Lincoln and Tri City scoreless at the end of two. Des Moines and Sioux City tied at one. Second period just underway in Iowa. Muskegon with a three nothing lead over the Waterloo Blackhawks. Chicago leads Omaha 1-0 at the end of the first period as Omaha trying to break their 16-game losing streak. Omaha has not won a game since their trip to the Cavelli Center here at the beginning of January. And the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders lead the U-17s 1-0 at the first intermission. Over to the NHL scoreboard. Sabres lead the Golden Knights 3-2 at the end of the second. Five minutes left in the second. The Rangers and Maple Leafs are tied at two. Three minutes left in the second. The Lightning and Canadians are tied at two. Two minutes left in the second. Senators and Flyers knotted up at one. Islanders lead the Boston Bruins 4-0 five minutes into the second period. Columbus Blue Jackets lead the Chicago Blackhawks 2-1 at the first intermission. First period in Dallas, San Jose with a 1-0 lead over the Stars. Earlier this afternoon, the Winnipeg Jets beat the Carolina Hurricanes 5-3. Florida shut out the Red Wings 4-0. Oilers over the Kraken 2-1. Blues over the Wild 3-1. Predators over the Avalanche 5-1. And then the late game tonight. In fact, the only game in the NHL not underway yet. Getting underway in about an hour and 15 minutes or so. The Pittsburgh Penguins will be in Calgary to take on the Flames. Right now, the Flames have started the jersey retirement ceremony for their goalie, Mikra Kiprasov. College hockey scoreboard. Robert Morris leads Bentley 3-1 at the second intermission. Canisius 5-2 winners over Mercyhurst. Niagara leads Army 2-1. Northern Michigan shuts out Bowling Green 1-0. Michigan Tech shuts out St. Thomas 6-0. Bemidji State leads Minnesota State 1-0. Clarkson leads Princeton 4-1. Cornell up 3-0 over RPI. Colgate leads Union 3-1. Quinnipiac up 5-1 over St. Lawrence. Dartmouth leading Yale 2-1 with five minutes left in or five minutes into the third period. Northeastern down Yukon 4-2. UMass, 4-3 winners over UMass Lowell in overtime. Maine and Vermont tied at two, five minutes into the third. Denver leads St. Cloud State 3-0 at the second intermission. North Dakota leads Western Michigan 1-0 at the second intermission. Omaha up 2-1 on Miami, second intermission. One minute left in the first, and Minnesota Duluth and Colorado College are tied at one. Penn State beat Ohio State 2-1. Michigan and Minnesota are scoreless halfway through the first. Later tonight, in fact, getting underway in probably about the next 10 to 15 minutes, Michigan State will be at the Kohl Center to take on the Wisconsin Badgers. Arizona State leads Long Island 3-1. to 
Alaska Anchorage up 8-2 on Stonehill. And Alaska Fairbanks leads Augustana 1-0 a minute into the third period. That'll do it for the out-of-town scoreboard and the second intermission report. We're going to step aside for a timeout. When we come back, third period action between the Youngstown fans and Dubuque Fighting Saints here for you on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. The Mahoning Valley's leader for golf, Milk Creek Golf Course, is now booking tee times for 2024. We offer stay and play opportunities available with nine area hotel partners. For more information, visit our website at millcreekmetroparks.org. Also, look for new exciting opportunities coming soon, including an indoor player development center with Trackman, an indoor Callaway club fitting center, and an Odyssey fitting studio in 2024. Follow us on Facebook at Milk Creek Golf Course or call 330-740-7112. At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110, and go Phantoms! When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. Looking to buy or sell a home? Team Marzo with Next Home Go 30 Realty can help. As a premier real estate team in the Mahoning Valley, we bring a unique and progressive approach to real estate using top listing technology, unique signage, and best practices in mobile and online marketing. Our customer-centric approach combines the best of technology with years of marketing expertise to provide an exceptional buying or selling experience. Call us today at 330-503-2250 so you can move with Marzo. Get a me drink. Get a me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get a me Drain at 330 758 5031 and get it fixed fast. Call now 330 758 5031. You hear it all the time. Why Youngstown State University? Here's why. Because when it comes to engineering, medicine, sports, business, and the skills you need to take your place in the world, we take a backseat to nobody. Because we're the kind of people who look out for each other. Because we care about you, your success, and our future together. We are Youngstown State University, and now you know why. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Matt Lipsack and Brendan Miller here for you. The start of the third period. Fighting Saints with a one to nothing lead. We're going to start at even strength. Although given the way this game has gone, it might not be there for long. Yeah, I mean, with the amount of penalties that we have, I mean, you're bound to see something happen, especially with Youngstown going to be fighting for anything they can, they can get. So there's probably going to be some called, but Hopefully not tonight, or hopefully not this last period here. And if you're Youngstown, you got to bear down here. Do not let Dubuque have any, any opportunities and take all the opportunities away from them. Roll for initiative, third period underway. Youngstown wins the draw. Osborne to DeHaro up the near side. Gains the red line and fires it into the zone. Raylor couldn't stop it behind the cage. Young, little trouble with it at the far half wall. And Dubuque will vacate their own end. Back down in the Youngstown zone. Bottero along the end wall. Chip up that near wall. Weisenden kept the line through the reverse hit on Patilla. And then a little bit of a hip check there by Readers. The puck's right around his face. Be careful <laughs> as he threw it to open ice. Sandro was all by himself in front of the cage. Lucky for the Phantoms. That one went wide as DeHaro sends it up the near boards to Ramos. Couldn't bump it to Burchill as his stride got thrown off by a fighting Saint as Dubuque enters the zone offside. 46 seconds into this third period. Third period presented by Safehold. Faceoff will be in the neutral zone just outside the Youngstown blue line. And to drop the puck to the far side. Charlie Serrato to take the draw 
against Eric Paulson. And Serrano won that draw forward, but right to the stick of Lucas St. Louis. Plays it into the right wing corner. Sorry, that's Malbuff. Pittner tries to clear, hit a stanchion, stayed in the zone. Noah Powell battling for it, worked it down the wall to Barron, taken away by Serrato, and he'll carry to the red line, got it over to Burchill, sent back ahead for Serrato, back to Burchill, couldn't touch it. To Charlie in the corner, out toward the point. Pittner kept the line. Over to the near side, he'll backhand it down the wall to Strathman. Took a bump from behind. So the puck rolled into the corner, centering feed there by Youngstown, trying to whip it over to Pittner. Saints pick it off, and they will try to break it ahead. In fact, they will make it to the neutral zone as Barron had to spin quickly away from Tory Pittner. Tory had him lined up. <laughs> I was just about to say, I mean, it looked like he had him lined up for about five yards straight, just waiting for him to come that way. Pittner ahead off of Rusinski. Rolls to Malbuff, brings it behind the cage, feeds it up the near wall off of Frank. Ronaldo took it back, threw it toward the cage and blocked away by Seamus Powell. Never got in on Raidler as Powell sends it off the top of the glass and out to center. Rusinski battling for it there but taken away by Aaron. He's knocked down by Hanrahan and Ronaldo comes away with the puck. Into the zone one on two. Swings out to left, got the shot away over the cage as Raidler threw the trapper up at it. Ronaldo tried to feed it in front. Broken up by the Saints. Rusinski held the line for a moment, but second effort, Cornforth able to get it out to the neutral zone. Aaron had to play it away from Hanrahan in the Youngstown end as he goes off for a line change. Wilson in the near corner. Surveying the scene and carries ahead. Jack to the red line, to the Dubuque zone for Ronaldo, who sends it in and goes off for a line change. Merrill sends it ahead for the Fighting Saints. St. Louis into the zone, but ran into Osborne. Patilla got the puck away, sent it quickly around the glass and to Botterill to backhand out to center. Taken right back by the Saints. Romeo denied entry to the zone by DeHaro as Patilla picks up the loose puck, plays it to Osborne, back near side for DeHaro, out to center for Botterill, behind him to Young. Grant from the red line, throws it on net. Raylor makes a save, rebound. Patilla couldn't get there in time to get a good shot away. He'll battle against Sondrell behind the cage as it comes to Giuliani in the left corner. Saints will feed it back out to center. That's Romeo being watched by Luke Osborne. Osborne goes down as Romeo catches up to it in the left corner. Send it around the wall to Haro. Got a stick on it as it came over to Dick. Haro pried it away from Sondrell and bounced it out to center. No icing here as this one's going to roll on net. And Rayther will throw the trapper on top of it with Ryan Botterill right there at the edge of the blue paint. 16-27 left in this third period. Dubuque still clinging to that one to nothing lead. Yeah, you're gonna expect Dubuque to probably dump the puck in a little bit more, you know, be, still be aggressive. So if you're Youngstown, you gotta catch, catch them possibly an odd man rush, something like that to get something going here. As Serrato wins the draw, Veronin lost the puck and the Saints will come ahead. Hendrickson. His pass knocked away by Veronin. Taken back by the Saints. Reader into the slot. Hendrickson couldn't pull the trigger. Nice stick there by Birchall as Strathman comes over to the near wall. Pulled it out to center looking for Veronin. Pass was out of his reach and Scott knocks it over to Reader. Reader off the near wall to himself. Got away from Birchall. Now has a lane to the net. Denied quickly there as he threw it. Elevated through the mouth of the blue paint. Scott holds the zone to Reader. Center point. Visenin. Left circle. Scott. Thought about the shot, does get the shot away. Sticked away cleanly by Aiden Wright. Strathman to the rebound. Bounced it through center, looking for Veronin. Out of his reach as Scott will play it in the right wing corner. Leaves it off the wall to Weisman. Threw it up the middle to Rusinski. Shot, glove, saved by Raidler, and he hangs on. Oh. As best chance of the game, probably there for Youngstown. Raidler came 10 feet out of his crease to challenge Ryan Rusinski. Yeah, Rusinski just walked right down the alley right there. And like you just said, Ryder just walked right out to the crease and cut off the angle. Great move by him, but Rusinski, not much he could do with that when the goalie comes out that far. And like you said, the greatest, the great, the best chance right there for Youngstown in a while. I don't think we're gonna get a look at the replay before the puck gets back down as Ronaldo is going to take the draw. I believe against Paulson. I couldn't figure out why the crowd was drawn. Rusinski did a little shoulder bump 
on Raylor as he went by the blue paint, and that drew the ire of the Dubuque defenseman. Puck at center, now down into the Youngstown end, Noah Powell. He's trying to keep the play alive on the far wall, but Hanrahan will chip it back out to center. Powell couldn't beat out Marin, but just able to get a stick on it to play away from Zach before he could make his move. As Marin threw it through the slot, but it was behind Ronaldo, and Noah Powell will come ahead. Into the zone down the right side, drop back to Sheamus. Spins the top of the right circle, center point. Malbuff shot, kick save by Aiden Wright. Rebound to Paulson. Through Noah, and down the ice it goes. So no icing here, Youngstown will get a full line change. And I've noticed, Matt, Dubuque really likes to have those. As Malbuff turns it over, but Botterill's shot kicked out easily by Raidler. Noah Powell back into the Youngstown zone, forces his way through to Haro, but nice stick there by Connor to get the puck away as Botterill chips it to Patilla. Phantoms have a three on three. Into the zone comes Osborne, walks across the top of the circle, shot, shoulder save, Raidler, rebound behind the net. Picked up by Botterill to the point for DeHaro. Connor walks the blue line, feeds it over to Osborne, near side. Luke looks at the net. Still looking, got the shot away, blocked. Patilla over to the right wall for the rebound. Double teamed by Cornforth. And Desiderio. This puck is now just kind of pinned to that far wall. Cornforth digging at it, trying to get it out. Three Saints, two Phantoms now. Patilla just kind of there at the edge of the scrum, referee saying move the puck. Young had it free for a moment. Patilla gets it. Patilla, however, lost it to Caleb Dick. He'll carry it around the cage to the near side as Young lost his footing and his twig. So the puck sent down into the Youngstown end. Right up the far wall. Aaron fanned on the shot. Now back to Desiderio. His shot hit his man in the slot. That was Frank comes out to the near side as Dick works it down low. Cornforth off the side of the net came back to him. In the right corner, he'll carry up the wall. Back down in the corner for Frank, taken to the boards by DeHaro. Osborne comes in to help out his defensive partner, pokes up the wall. Botterill able to get control of it for a moment, but couldn't clear. Osborne took his man down, but the puck rolled to Aaron. He'll send it around the wall, and it'll come to the half for Desiderio. His shot sticked away by Wright. Rebound to the corner. Osborne up the wall, just able to get it over the stick of Frank and out the center. Dick lost his footing at center, played it away from Botterill, however. It came to Osborne. Luke into the zone, swinging out to the left, defended away by Dick. Looks for the trailer. Osborne still with it. Left half wall shot, missed the net. Pittner pinching into the half wall, trying to keep this alive for Youngstown. 12.43 left in the third. Youngstown trails by a goal. King around the wall over to Dick. Turned it over to Strathman, his shot wide of the cage. Ronan to the rebound right wall, to Serrato behind the net. Charlie banked it up to Strathman, one timer, blocked in front, rebound came to King. Skates it to the official's crease, but Pittner denied him the line. Torrey, however, couldn't clear as King blocked off the clearing attempt, and he has it in the left corner. Torrey dives after him, but missed. Played up to the point for Vizen and D2D over to Scott. Missed the puck, but able to keep it away from Birchall and sent it down low for Giuliani. Back up the far wall. Scott, down low and around. Strathman touched it away from Frank, but Veronin couldn't clear. Up to the point, bouncing puck. Vizenin just held the line as his shot toward the cage, blocked away by Pittner. Rebound to Giuliani. Tried to play in front, blocked away by Pittner again. Serato fanned on his clearing attempt as Dubuque's fourth line here, keeping it alive. Giuliani to the left wing corner. Tangled up with Strathman. Puck came free and Burchill will just send it to open ice, but right in front of the Phantoms bench. Birchall stripped Vizen to the puck and played it to open ice as jumping on to the play is Hendrickson. Back into the young zone zone, down the left side, dropped it behind him for a shot by Merrill that is wide of the cage. Rebound to the right point, Vizen and toward the net, redirected on the cage by Giuliani, saved by right. Veronin able to play it out to center. Scott in front of his own bench, being pressured by Rusinski, brought into the zone by Giuliani, and then chipped back down the ice into the young sound zone. Dubuque to the line change. Strathman off the end wall over to Hanrahan. Strat's been on the ice for a while here. Strathman hard around the wall to Ronaldo in the neutral zone. Touch back to Rosinski, then Hanrahan. And Hammer from in front of the debut bench will backhand it into the Saint zone. Behind the cage, it's Powell. He will just send it out to center. Skating into it in the Youngstown zone is Reeder, but then overskated. Wilson played into the corner, taken away by Reeder, sent toward the circle, taken by Hanrahan, and out to center for Ronaldo. Sam into the zone. 
Crisscrossing, fed down low and missed the cage. Hanrahan into the corner, behind the net for Ronaldo. Sam checked it to the left corner, but Reeder's going to skate into it for Dubuque. Played it to the line. Wilson couldn't hold the zone. He'll squirt back to center. Taken there by Patilla. He'll float far side and lift it into the Dubuque end. Comes around the kick plate. And the Saints will bring it back to center. It's Sandriol. Over to Reeder. Osborne beat him to the puck around the goal line. Comes behind the net. Picked up there by Young. Grant floats it ahead to Botterill. Far side open ice for Osborne. Luke into the zone, down the right side, shot away, missed the net, had some room to work with on the far side as Powell plays it out to center for Barron. Dropped it behind him for a shot that is right into the belly of Aiden Wright. He'll hang on, 9.49 left in the third. Dubuque leads one to nothing. Listening to Youngstown Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and Flow Sports. Premier Bank is powered by people. People like our proud and strong and wonderfully one-of-a-kind customers who trust us with their dreams and goals. People like our attentive employees who listen and collaborate to consistently deliver the best customer service in the business. People like those in our community who help us make the places we call home as strong as they can possibly be. People like you who we look forward to connecting with at yourpremierbank.com. Premier Bank, powered by people. Member FDIC. We now return you to Phantoms Hockey on Western Reserve Radio and the voice of the Phantoms, Matt Lipsack. Nine forty-nine left in the third period. Dubuque leads one to nothing as we have just crossed the nine o'clock hour on a Saturday. And I need to tell my children to go to bed. <laughs> uh, I, I just saw. I got a notification on my phone that my my son sent me a gift on Pokemon Go. John, go <laughs> to bed. It was fun seeing him here the other night, and and getting sure. to getting getting to see him enjoy your, you know, you doing your job and stuff like that. It was fun to see. Being, being along with the ride here. I'm sure John will be back to at least one more game before the uh, the season is over. In fact, hopefully next Sunday we can get him out here. As That's Youngstown awesome. wins the defensive zone draw, Patilla hard out to center, was trying to stretch one out for Ramos, did not click. Now Patilla has it back, he'll skate it through center, got past Paulson into the zone, but the puck bobbled on him, and Paulson plays it back out to center, picked up by DeHaro, but he lost it as Dubuque somehow able to enter the zone onside there, but the puck rolled back to DeHaro as Ramos gets knocked down at center, looking for either an interference or an elbow call, but nothing forthcoming as Saints play it to the front of their bench for Powell and then touched ahead for Paulson. Into the zone, watched by DeHaro, turns his back to the play, floats it back over to Powell. Powell, right circle, cuts around from Young. That's going to be a tripping call on Youngstown. As Dick sends it toward the cage, stopped by Young, who will go back to the penalty box. Yeah. Phantoms to oh sorry no I was, go ahead. I was just about to say that well, that's one thing that's just going to be called anytime one of those one of those calls that's just too blatant and, and you can't have that right now at this time of, at this time of the game here 905 left in the third period in fact I, I think we should be having another media timeout right now I think we're going to keep it here though face off will be to the blocker side of Aiden Wright Porch will take the draw against Sandriol. Fifth power play of the game for Dubuque. Sandriol wins the draw cleanly back to Weisnan. Walks across the blue line, sends it back to Sandriol left wall. Into the corner for Reeder. Reeder poked off of his twig by Pinner, able to gather it and play it to Sandriol. Center point for Weisnan. Over to the right wall for St. Louis. Hard bullet pass across to Sandriol. Had to play it off the wall to himself. Bison in center point back to Sandrell. Top of the left circle, side of the cage reader. Tried to bump it across to St. Louis. Pass didn't go as planned for Dubuque. Burt Schultz knocks it up in the wall. Tried to smack at it, but it's going to be taken by Aaron. Played over to Reeder. Back to Aaron. Loose in front of the blue paint. Pittner plays to the corner, but St. Louis will send it up to the point for Bison. And 40 seconds gone on the Adams Street Preservation penalty kill. St. Louis right half wall to Reeder below the goal line. He'll float behind the net. To St. Louis, to Weizen, Sandriol, toe drag shot, Pittner blocked it. Came out to Weizen and his shot blocked to the end wall by Birchall. Loose puck picked up by Osborne, cleared it. No, he kept it at the line. Somehow Weizen kept it on the blue paint. Reeder in the left corner. Toward the cage, it hit something, redirected off the pad of Aiden right and went wide. That one almost went in. 45 seconds left on the kill for Youngstown. Fed up the wall by Dubuque. 
Center ice, Vizen in. Lost it out to center, rips down Rusinski. Penalty upcoming. As Rusinski has to be separated from Vizenin, who almost gave up a shorthanded goal for the second game in a row. Great hustle by Ryan Rusinski to draw the call. 36 seconds of four on four. And then Youngstown will have a minute 24 of power play time. It will be the sixth power play of the game for Youngstown. Yeah, and that's something you got to feed off here. If you're Youngstown, this power play unit, or this four and four unit, you just got to find a way to get something to the net and just get something going. You know, that, that, that penalty right there has killed all the momentum for Dubuque. You just got to find a way just to get your own, own momentum here if you're Youngstown. Birchall will take the draw against Paulson. To the left of Kevin Radler, who has a 23 save shutout going. Paulson wins the draw, feeds it back to Seamus Powell. Had it stolen by Birchall, but his shot ripped through the blue paint wide. Wilson walks the blue line. Jack on his backhand, right circle, fed it in front. Hit a stick and went wide. Noah Powell to the rebound, send it out to center off of a Youngstown skate, loose in front of the Dubuque bench, picked up there by Sheamus and dropped back for I believe St. Louis. Back out to center it comes. Paulson dropped it back for Powell. As now out of the box comes Grant Young. Youngstown is on the power play. Powell out to center off of Noah Powell. And down into the Youngstown end, Phantoms change up the personnel to get the top power play unit out there. Strathman leaves it behind him for Serato. Charlie floats near side, played it over to Botterill, touched it back to Serato. Fed around the kick play to Young right half wall. Grant up to the point for Strathman. Andrew walks the blue line, gives it back to Young. Young eyed the cage, and he says gonna give it back to Strathman. Over to Botterill, left circle. Bottero to the corner, 40 seconds left on the power play. Side of the net, Patilla back to Bottero at the half wall. Strathman one timer from the point, hit a body in front, never got into Radler. Rebound picked up by the Phantoms. Young double teamed in the corner. Serato and Patilla both in to help him out. Serato diving effort, got it to Strathman, wheeled it around to Bottero. 20 seconds left in the power play. Bottero spun away from his man, got it center point to Strathman. To Serato, left circle, Charlie behind him to Bottero. Back to Serato, he'll come behind the cage, now right side. Charlie, center point, Strathman, back down the wall. Seven seconds left in the power play. Serato through the box, Bottero, shot blocks, rebound. Got in on Raylor, made the save, up to the point for Strathman. Out of the box, comes Vizenin as Strathman turns it over. And it's sent back out to center for Vizenin, two on one developing. Over to Dick, shot missed the cage, as it was two defensemen. Up on the two on one for Dubuque. And you don't see that very often. Two defensemen on a two-on-one right there. Strathman played it pretty well. As Paulson sends one off the side of the cage. Young to the rebound, sends it up the near wall. St. Louis kept the zone, fed it down. Young couldn't clear it. Paulson tried to feed it back door, looking for Noah Powell, broken up by Zach Marin. Beautiful read there by Marin, but he couldn't clear. Paulson with it again, near wall. Side of the cage, Powell in front. Barron, shot, save. Great look there by Aiden Wright as Powell. Eyes the cage, threw it on net, and Wright made a chest and glove save but couldn't control the rebound. Noah Powell still with it. Up to the far wall. Powell across, one-timer blocked by Strathman. One-timer came off the stick of Lucas St. Louis as Strathman sent it up the wall but couldn't clear. Second effort, gets it to the line for Marin. Two on one with Rusinski if they hurry. Back to Marin. Zach coming in, shot, missed the net well wide. Rebound off the corner glass up to the point. Line was kept by Marin. Zach over to the far wall, 4.30 left in regulation. Puck sent toward the net and redirects high and wide. DeHaro sent it back toward the far corner, broken up by Desiderio and sent down the ice. Not enough steam on this one for icing as Dubuque gets tired bodies off the ice. DeHaro from the official's crease, fired it in, but right to Scott. Over to Weisenden, back to Scott. He'll carry ahead. Scott, red line and blue, into the zone, down the left wall. Scott fed it in front, chip wide of the cage by Frank, and somebody's stick is broken. Shot from the right point, gloved and held by Aiden Wright. And, and Aiden Wright just coming up big with multiple saves right there to keep this a one-goal game. 
3.50 left in the third. It's a Dubuque stick that was broken. I believe that happened on the previous play. So the faceoff will be to the glove side of Aiden Wright. Serato to take the draw against Merrill. Merrill wins the draw cleanly, back to the point. Vizen and fake the shot, and then instead will pump it behind the net. Picked up there by Wilson. Fed up the far side. Birchall out of his reach, but skating into it is Veronin. Veronin tried to drop it off for Birchall. Fed it to Serato. Skates across the circles, but Puck was rolling on him. He couldn't pull the trigger. Tried to play it back to the left point, but nobody was there for Youngstown. And skating ahead is Romeo. Into the zone they come. Desiderio, his shot blocked to the corner by Pittner. Merrill. Feeding it up the far wall. Birchall got a hold of it, sends it off the glass and out to center. And the puck goes out of play. 3.18 left in the third period. <laughs> Neutral zone draw. Just outside the Youngstown blue line. Young to take the face off. against Aaron. And Young wins the drop, but Patilla couldn't get control. His corner fourth dropped it back to Powell. D to D over to Malbuff, sent into the Youngstown end, but icing will be called on the Dubuque Fighting Saints. 309 left in regulation. Dubuque leads by a goal. And this might be the opportunity that Youngstown has right here. One of their top units on the ice as as I just say that, they're changing lines here. Phantoms are going to send out Ronaldo, Rusinski, and Marin. It looks like they're going to have Marin set up right behind Ronaldo, possibly a one-timer. As Dubuque's going to change alignment. Ronaldo to take the draw. Face-off one, however, by Dubuque. And it will just lift it out to center. Glove down by Cornforth. Knocked away from him by Marin and Pittner. Ronaldo plays it ahead to Rusinski. Into the zone, one on two. Down the right side, bumped by Seamus Powell. Rusinski spins in the right corner. Still being double teamed, left it there. It'll squirt behind the net for Ronaldo. Sam comes near side. Credit to Strathman. Spins in the left corner. Up high for Ronaldo. One timer. Missed the cage well high and wide. Don't think Raylor ever saw it. Up the boards by Dubuque. Pittner holds the zone. Got past Cornforth. Pittner lost the puck as it bounced on him, and Dubuque will bounce it out to center. Two and a half left in the third. Phantom still trail one to nothing. Into the zone comes Ronaldo. Toe drag shot, and he missed the cage. Might have gone off the inside leg of Powell as Strathman can't hold the zone. Pittner plays it back ahead. Marin trying to catch up to it along the right wall. Instead, Dubuque will send it up that side and get it out to center. Bobble on Reeder. At center ice for a moment, able to regather and set it to the Youngstown end. Pittner hard around the wall to the far side, found Marin. Out to center for Serato. Charlie swept off of his stick, but Marin kept the zone. Shot blocked. And here comes right off, the off to the bench for the extra attacker. 158 left in the third, extra attackers on the ice. Patilla to Osborne. Into the corner, fed toward the blue paint, knocked off by Reeder. Dubuque skating ahead. Feeding it toward Sandriol, but passed too far ahead for him to set it to the empty net. Instead, it'll be Hendrickson who puts it into the empty cage on the one touch, and Dubuque leads two to nothing. For Sandriol, point number 99 in his USHL career, as Hendrickson gets his second goal of the game. Yeah, just a mishap there on the offensive zone for Youngstown, and you know Dubuque being the team that they are, they're not going to they're not going to let that one go. So 98 seconds left in regulation, and Youngstown trails by two. Face off to come at center red. And at this point, for Youngstown, just get pucks deep behind the net, work from below there. 
crash a crease, anything that, anything that might get you a, a chance at all. As bodies come together at center, as the puck redirects off of Rusinski and goes just wide, Youngstown has not been shut out since March the 22nd wow. of 2022. So it's been almost two full years. Fans were not shut at all last season. As they'll play it to Malbuff, far side and he'll bank it out to center, comes to Paulson. 70 seconds left in regulation. Noah Powell fed it in front to Barron, he scores. Michael Barron, his 15th goal of the season. Second goal of the weekend as Noah Powell got shaken up on the play. But now Dubuque leads 3-0 and this one all but over. Yeah, just another a man miss right there and just was able to come free and just find a, find a little hole pass right. So Youngstown going to get swept at home for the second time in the 2024 calendar year. As Serato wins the draw, comes back to Wilson. As we are at a minute remaining in regulation, 25 saves, shutout going right now for Raidler as he leaves it for Desiderio. Hit a stanchion, came to Merrill, took a bump from Serato, fed up the wall to Romeo, and chipped out to center by the Saints. Ahead comes Dick, he'll run into Wilson, and then Patilla left it in the circle from Merrill, up to the point for Vizenin, D to D over to Desiderio, his shot from the left circle to the glove of Aiden Wright as Hanrahan talking with Merrill. Merrill just gave him the face wash, Hanrahan wants a piece. Somebody with a red glove lost their mitt. Hanrahan and Dick separated by linesman Stachelski. as being helped over to the Dubuque bench is Josh Giuliani. 35.7 left in the third. And you're, you're, gonna have the, you're gonna have one of these types of nights here where Youngstown gets frustrated. It's a game that they need to have, and especially after last night. Uh, you know, tempers are flaring right now. Obviously no one likes to get shut out, but you know, you like to fight back from, from the team right now. Face off to the right of right. Face off warning on Youngstown. I don't think they like the way Hanrahan was lined up as Rusinski will take the draw against Merrill. Dubuque wins the draw, Giuliani plays it out to center. Dick backtrack towards his own line then plays it ahead for Giuliani. Floats it just wide of the cage. Wilson picks it up below the goal line. Send it up the far wall, picked off by Romeo. Romeo dropped it back for Giuliani, shot wide of the cage, 20 seconds left in regulation. Ramos clubbed it off the wall and into the Youngstown bench. His bodies are coming together again. Merrill tangles with Patilla, Giuliani tangling with Hanrahan. And you don't want to fight in the last five minutes because that'll get you a suspension as Jack Wilson face washing Desiderio as Hanrahan's being triple teamed on the far wall. One of the linesmen went down, Desiderio doesn't have a helmet. Merrill being helped to the debut penalty box. Big scrum around the Youngstown blue line. Looks like the linesman might have things settled down here with 14.9 seconds left in the third. Dubuque bench barking at Jack Wilson, who's keeping a watchful eye on Teddy Merrill's helmet. Giuliani sent off down the tunnel. It's like Noah Powell's the one doing a lot of the talking there on the Dubuque bench. 14.9 left in the third.
Did not see anybody head off down the Youngstown tunnel. No, I just think Giuliano went off. But yes. hey, Matt, this is this is one thing that I like to see right here. At, at you know, getting close to the playoffs, you want that grit, you want that firepower. You know, obviously, you want to be disciplined. Do not, you know, do not let your your team go down one man. But at the same time, you got to get that firepower, especially you know a game like this. You want to have some momentum going into next weekend too. I guess, you know, the other side of the coin, part of it is is that, you know, the Youngstown power play let them down yes. tonight. 0, 0 for 6 on the man advantage for Youngstown when one obviously would have made a world yeah. of difference. Yeah, and especially against the PK like du Dubuque. And the thing about it, too, is we have uh, Youngstown has a lot of firepower on the power plays on each unit. And, and that's the one thing is you just got to find ways to just get the puck at, towards the net. Something will happen. Right now, the only penalty on the board is to Matt Desiderio. So it looks like Youngstown has 14.9 seconds left to try to break up this shutout. So Patilla gets two for roughing. Desiderio and Giuliani looks like they're going to get the Penalties for Dubuque as the Fighting Saints win the faceoff. Malbo carries around the cage to the far side. Sent it to the line. Ronaldo kept the zone, but going to squirt to Caleb Dick in the corner. He'll send it off the near glass. Almost took Chaz Naki's head off as it rolls down the ice, and that will do it for tonight. Dubuque gets the sweep. They shut out Youngstown tonight by the score of 3 to nothing. Youngstown shut out for the first time since March of 2022. Final shots on goal for the game, 27 to 25 in favor of the Fighting Saints. Dubuque out shoots Youngstown 11 to nine here in the third period. We're gonna go ahead and step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we'll have the post game show here for you on West Reserve Radio and Flow Hockey. The Mahoning Valley's leader for golf, Milk Creek Golf Course is now booking tee times for 2024. We offer stay and play opportunities available with nine area hotel partners. For more information, visit our website at millcreekmetroparks.org. Also, look for new exciting opportunities coming soon, including an indoor player development center with Trackman, an indoor Callaway club fitting center, and an Odyssey fitting studio in 2024. Follow us on Facebook at Milk Creek Golf Course or call 330-740-7112. At Two Men in a Truck, we know moving is tough, but we make it easy. Whether your move is big or small, we'll make it a smooth one. We're the movers who care, and we'll prove it with our 96% referral rate and courteous professional movers. For your next move, call Two Men in a Truck, Youngstown, 330-758-2110. That's 330-758-2110. And go Phantoms! Passion. Talent. Development. NCAA hockey offers all that and its players graduate at a 90% rate. Joe Pavelski. Backhand scores! Wow, what a goal! Johnny Gaudreau. And Tori Krug were stars on campus before the NHL stage. Whether you are a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. Visit collegehockeyinc.com and follow at College Hockey. Champions of the college hockey world! When disaster strikes, you don't have time to waste. You need Crago's Restoration, your trusted partner in restoring your home. From water damage and flood restoration to sewage cleanup, we've got you covered. And that's not all. We also offer pressure washing, mold remediation, and even interior demolition. Certified in flood and sewage damage restoration, we're the experts you can count on. Call Crago's Restoration today at 330-610-4193. 330-610-4193. Crago's Restoration, where your home's recovery begins. The Doubletree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Youngstown Phantoms. Located in downtown's historical standby building and fully updated with today's amenities while preserving its historical charm and neoclassical architecture of 1907. Offering modern conveniences such as on-site room service, free Wi-Fi, complimentary business center, and a 24-hour fitness center. Events are also memorable with over 5,000 square feet of meeting space, including our top floor ballroom accented by 13-foot ceilings, Palladian windows, and views from 12 stories up. Conveniently located within walking distance to the Cavelli Center, the Youngstown Foundation Amphitheater, Youngstown State University, Oh Wow Science Center, and Dior Performing Arts Center, 
The Double Tree by Hilton Youngstown Downtown is a proud partner of the Youngstown Phantoms and invites you to be our valued guest. Get a me drink. Get me drain. Drain or sewer problems? Call Get me drain at 330-758-5031 and get it fixed.